Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from the center of Eurasia. Today, we call to your attention a tournament of champions, the AIGA Champions League quarterfinals. Four teams will compete this weekend. Team Adolfo, Team Al Leone, last season's finalists, Team Nurmagomedov, and the returning champions, Universal Fighters. These four teams will compete over the next two days to determine the last two teams to advance to the final four. So as we start, I invite the first pair of teams. Up first, in the red corner, Team Nurmagomedov. Up first at 60 kilograms, Alihan Igembek. And at 65 kilograms, Aga Sharinov Artur. At 70 kilograms, Ali Bekov Gaji Morad. At 76 kilograms, Bagir Gazratov. Competing at 83 kilograms, Davud Magomedov. And at 91 kilograms, Murad Ramazanov. And competing at over 91 kilograms, Ibrahimov Magomed. And their opponents in the blue corner, Universal Fighters. Up first at 60 kilograms, Shabanov, Magomed. Kilograms for Universal Fighters, Akhmedov Zaur. And at 70 kilograms, Gair Beck Ibrahimov. And at 76 kilograms, Kite Masov Rashid. And at eighty three 
three kilograms. Adilov Abdul Jalil. At 91 kilograms, Abdullayev Gaji Morad. And at 91 plus kilograms, Abdullayev Ruslan. Now, if the two team captains can join me with the head referee in the center of the mat, we will draw the order of weights. The first weight will be 65 kilograms. The second weight will be 83 kilograms. The third weight will be plus 91 kilograms. The fourth weight will be 76 kilograms. The fifth weight will be 91 kilograms. And the sixth weight will be 60 kilograms. Which means our seventh and final weight will be 70 kilograms. All right, up first will be 65 kilograms.
ladies and gentlemen, live from Almaty, Kazakhstan. It's round two of the IGA Champions League quarterfinals. Uh, the first tie starts with Universal Fighters versus Nurmagomedov MMA School. I'm Barya Honardar, uh, joined by the legend himself, Saeed <laughs> Donkayev. Welcome, buddy. Hey, welcome to be back. Can you hear me well? Can you? So apologies for the delay, uh, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, we're experiencing some technical difficulties, but uh, we're going to sort them out. So um, let's go over some of uh, the details of uh, the uh, the rule set. Say yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm all ears. Okay, so what we have here is uh, the it's the quarterfinals where we have four teams. It's a round robin format where all teams will be fighting each other, so everybody gets a chance. Um, everybody gets a chance and uh, to uh, you know to get on the scoreboard uh, and uh, it's seven fighters for each team uh, the first fighter to reach four wins basically uh, the first team to get four wins basically wins that tie um, regardless of the result all seven fighters will be fighting all seven matches will be conducted uh, the basis of the points are um, submission Fighting World Federation, which is ADCC, with minor adjustments. For example, the first uh, few minutes, uh, in this case, the first uh, two minutes, if I'm correct, uh, where uh, no points are accumulated. You can get points for a takedown. Uh, there are three five-minute rounds, which means that the fighter to win two rounds, regardless of the point differentiation between uh, the, the, the rounds, will win the fight. However, there is the uh, submission uh, stipulation where whoever wins by submission will take the fight, regardless if they're behind on the scorecard two rounds or if it happens in the first minute of the first round, the fight is basically over. Yeah. So uh, that, uh, I think, covers... Uh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, thank you. That, that we'll probably have to do it a few times because different people will be joining absolutely. different and is times. It, and is it a, uh, so um, far, we have our first match between two set. teams from Dagestan. One is Nurmagomedov MMA School, and another one Universal Fighters. Just to for some of you guys uh, to give you a little bit, um, if you're not familiar with the teams, I would say Universal Fighters is more like grappling and jiu-jitsu based team. They um, they do very well on the circuit of um, uh, Abu Dhabi. What is it like a UA, UAE AJP Federation? Now. It's yeah, called AGP, AJP. The yeah. AGP World Pro and uh, UWW like sure. wrestling organization. So. They're very experienced in, um, in those organizations, not really popular in IBGGF. Um, they do like, however, the ADCC rules. And let's see, we have so far our first match here between Zaur Ahmedov and Artur uh, Gashirinov. And uh, let's see, so far. It's a minus 65 yeah. kilogram fight that's taking place right now. Uh, Artur is a 26 year old black belt. Uh, he is from uh, Agat team and he trains out of uh, Mahachkala, that's in, uh, in Dagestan. Uh, some of the notable titles that he has, uh, he is a Abu Dhabi Grand Ooh, Slam, nice. a Moscow goal. We have a honey hole entry here, brown belt. potential heel hook. Zaur is roll, trying to roll out of the submission and successfully does so. Also, another circuit that the fighters from this part of the world fight in is the ACBJJ. You're obviously oh, yeah, very yeah. familiar with yes. that. 
Um, our uh, uh, fighter right now, Artur, he is an ACBJJ World o uh, Open Championship in Gi and No Gi. Gi 2021, gold at brown, bronze at purple, and gold at blue belt in Gi. So he was on a tear, yeah. basically, over there. And... Um, Guard pass attempt here by Zaur. You mentioned there was, um, we had a honey hole position and there was an attack for heel hooks, so everybody yeah. has to know that heel hooks are allowed. Yeah, heel hooks uh, are allowed. For here. the Champions League. In the overall um, IGA rule set for yeah. the other tournaments, uh, heel hooks are not allowed, yeah. but because of the level of professionalism in this tournament, uh, yeah. uh, heel hooks. Did you mention that it's going to be three rounds of five minutes? I did. Yeah, so. I did. So that's Remind me, it was the first minute, right? For the take, uh, for two minutes. First two minutes. Two minutes. It's a six-minute round, and two and four. Two minutes where only points six count. Five. You said six-minute round. I think it was five. If it's if it's five minutes, then huh? it's two and three. Six minutes, two and four. We'll see now. Say, there's so many rule sets. Yeah. So you know, many rule sets. So many different <laughs> tournaments. Sometimes yeah. they overlap each other, but. Uh, I'm sure we got the overall. Um, the overall gist of it was was uh, the three rounds, three five-minute rounds, mm -hmm. and then the team format, the team competition format is whoever wins four of the seven fights yeah. takes that tie. So what's happening here is that the fighters are going to qualify basically for the next round. The fighters are going to qualify for the next round, which means that the two top teams from these four will be automatically wow. going to the quarterfinals to fight Team yeah. Asai five mi five minute rounds. and um, yeah. Team Battle Force. Yes. With the two teams that won the first uh, quarterfinal round. So rounds. we had Asai Republic and Battle Force. Asai Republic yeah. and Battle Force. So we need two winners in this out of these four the teams. First, right? The top the first two, two teams yeah. will be going on to face uh, those two teams in the semifinals and final rounds, which yeah, will be in December, they right? will not be, I believe, will not be round robin. Two teams will fight for the semis, and then the uh -huh. winners will fight the next day in the finals, and the two teams will fight for a bronze because their um, uh, prize money is allocated to the first top three teams. So there will be a fight for the uh, third place and um, bronze medal. Remind me, please. So first two, first two minutes or one minute is no points, right? First only two Only for takedowns. Two minutes takedown yeah. counts, yes. But they can pull guard with the connection. With a connection, you yeah. can pull guard, yes. So, so far we have here um, Artur pull guard. <coughs> Probably going to be looking again for that honey hole. See right here, look, look. Uh, oh. Going for knee bar. Let's see. Zaur is like trying to. Zaur is trying to pass guard. Still no points, even if he does. Oh, let's see, let's see. We have submission attempt right here. He's going for a Dars? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, back to half guard. Trying to do Kimura then. Point. So that's a three-minute mark. That's a three-minute mark there. Yeah, on three minute mark, where so. the, uh, yeah. It's familiar, similar to what what they do in ADCC, where uh, the uh, the referee counts. Uh, he shouts out points. So now uh, the um, guard passing and the sweeps will make more sense. It's unless you're really searching for a submission mm -hmm. uh, in the first two minutes, you know, you get a guard pass, you, you put in a lot of effort to get it. If you're not going to get a submission, then basically you you know wasted the effort and there's no guarantee you're going to maintain that, you know, dominant position. And maybe that's like a strategy for the fighter on the bottom to just, you know, invite you in and probably try to set up something and catch you with it. So yeah. there's definitely a strategy to play here uh, with the rule set, with the time, of course, it's the three five-minute rounds. So, um, 
you know, it's they also they also sorry for interrupt you. They also need to make sure they don't go too crazy in the beginning because people uh, don't count the high altitude. A lot yeah, of people when they, when they come here, they they told me like, hey, when they first was fighting, like the guys from Team uh, huh? Universal <laughs> Fighters were telling that if you go hard in the beginning, you're gonna be breathing hard. Yeah, definitely. And me and you, when we trained, we felt it too, right? We like, did. Uh, yeah. We did. It's Actually, where I train, Tehran, it's pretty, pretty, high pretty similar. For me, I pretty am similar. We've got I'm in Orange range, County. No, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I did feel it. Maybe we were feeling the, the jet of lag the also. It was jet, jet lag, lag, and then yeah. the two, three days of commentating <laughs> yeah. and all that. So it was a combination of factors. Yeah. So, and so far here, Artur on bottom, I see him trying more. He's really like um, making attempts, and Zaur is fighting more conservative, like trying to be more careful and look for his opportunities. Um, I've seen his fights before. Um, you know, they, they like to really play with points. You know, you'll see a lot of guys um, from that region, they're gonna be, sometimes some of them might have exciting fun, ma matches and some of them will be making it like more like strategic war, you know, try uh -huh. to try to get more like a, make, it, make you a partner, like right now, you see Artur is like really trying, really trying, and then maybe he makes one mistake where he gives opportunity for Zaur to catch him or maybe get points or something, so let's see. But, so far, it looks like Artur is, do Artur Artur is doing a better job. Yeah. Uh, he also had the leg lock attack in the yeah. first round. So yeah. basically... He's threatening. Le yeah. When this round winds down, mm -hmm. we're going to have two rounds for, uh, for Artur. Yeah. So that means that um, Zaur would need... So how does it go? First round was 0-0. Zero, zero. Second round is 0-0. Zero, zero. No, uh, it's zero, 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 but uh, if they if they are tied zero zero or no if they're just basically uh so we got three rounds okay uh -huh. first round is zero zero second round might might be a tie for example let's say or, or second round somebody takes the second round okay for example yeah. two zero uh the fighter from universal fighters takes it and the third round the other fighter takes it regardless of the scorecard they will go to a referee decision yeah, yeah. But right now we have two rounds of draw. Yeah, we draw, have a third round. Who, whoever wins, third wins. round. Whoever wins, wins. Yes. But if, but if, if it's, it's draw, a draw, again, then referee decision. referee decision. And the first two rounds, basically, there was a submission attempt here, but overall, round one, um, Artur had a, a leg lock attack. Uh -huh. Second round, one a submission attempt for each of them. So basically, going into the third round, I would predict that Artur is ahead right now got because it. he got. If you if you want to yeah. get the second, he round, seems more even. like going for submission. Split At the end even. of the submission is what matters. Exactly. Yeah. So let's see. And Zaur, I remember wow. watching him yesterday. He was having hard time to cut weight too. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's trying to save some energy as well. Maybe. So this round, basically, um, you either have to get, you know, the, of course the submission will end the fight, but you have to get a decisive. Um, oh. So that's kind of connected to no, 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 no points. No points, huh? I hear their teammates saying that like count the stake down. looking yeah. at the replay. I love the Iga judges. Yeah. <laughs> They're so on hand. On hand. Yeah. Another leg lock attempt, look. He's done his work. Yeah. He's done his work with the leg locks. He's trying to go inverted for a crab right. Don't leave it in the hands of the judges, gentlemen. Okay, Ooh. he's got a right. toe hold there, but they're, they're coming roll. towards us. <laughs> oh yes, here they are. <laughs> oh, nice escape. Happened, happened to us a couple of times yeah. in the last event. <laughs> Hopefully, nobody lands on us this time. Yeah, yeah. And you remember we're, that? And we're you much closer that now. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming that they probably put us behind the fence here yeah. <laughs> behind the uh, you know the protector well, fence but we we'll have the best seats we'll in the house and closer definitely best seats mm -hmm. in the house i'm going to take some snapshots for the boys back home mm -hmm. 
to, uh, to show them that we do indeed have the best seats in the house. We got points. So we're at the business end of this round and this fight. And it's definitely going to be sweet to get the first win of the event. Definitely that does have some significance. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that uh, the boys are going to go full blast the last uh, two and a half minutes that they have. Sai, talk to us about the level of jiu-jitsu that we're seeing now from, you know, uh, Nurmagomedov school. Everybody was, you know, and, uh, assuming that... Um, well, they are an, uh, an MMA school. They focus mostly on uh, MMA competitions. They were mm -hmm. maybe ex expecting to see more of a wrestling style, power, jujitsu style. But uh, I know the weight, 65 kilograms, we see more of the technical guys. But that's some high level jujitsu that we're seeing. Yeah. Great I mean, guard, uh, great leg so attacks. So far, the guy from the Magomedov school is actually, in my opinion, winning the match. Mm -hmm. And um, But overall, out of these four teams, yeah. um, Everyone knows Modolfo team probably follows the jiu-jitsu, right? Uh, the, um, some of the guys from Aleon, but if you guys want to know more from this Dagestan team, yeah, as you said, this is, they're more focused on MMA. A lot of them are either current MMA fighters or retired MMA sure. fighters. Um, they all really have like good um, wrestling, judo. I mean, it's no surprise there. Also, even the team from Universal Fighters, they do as well. Yes. Um, they just have way more uh, jiu-jitsu competition experience, yeah. I would say. But so far, so far, Artur looks better in my eyes. He had a great guard. Yeah, and he... Um, and he's chained uh, Unless Zaur scores the points and steals this match, we oh, which we have the... Up nope, to. nothing. Yeah. He needed to secure that for three seconds to get the two points there. That mm -hmm. was close, though. Yeah. I think if he... So what happens here if... It's not like the conventional, whoever gets up gets the two points here. Mm -hmm. They always consider who initiated the attack, yeah. and then they will allocate the two points. Yeah. So 25 Still seconds left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That was close. And, and he if, if he comes up right now and still yeah. percentage, doesn't he get points? Nope. Because no, the the uh, Zaur was on on, on bottom. That's or? exactly what yeah. we just said. Yeah. Because he initiated the attack. Oh, so, okay. And that doesn't Perfect. happen. That's also that's good to clarify. That's an, also an, a, an ADCC rule. If you yeah. if you that's a major plus. If you drop for leg lock. Yeah. And you're the one who initiates the attack and and you stay on bottom. And you stay on bottom even after it's a failed attempt and the other fighter is on the top. You will not get two points. I like that. So much better than uh, it forces the fight to be more submissionless. It does, but then yeah. there's also the thin line where it's confusing yeah. as to whether did he get up first or did you attempt the yeah. attack first. There's always uh, yeah. something that makes who do you it. Think, who do you think won? I would give it to Artur. I would give it to Artur based on more submission attempt. I I would say. This is a close one. This yeah. is a really close one. He had more submission attempts. This. Yeah. 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 There we go. I think it's pretty fair for this one. It was a close one. Yeah, it when was it's a close, close match, yeah. When it's very close, you, you can't dispute the, the result because it's close. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, a lopsided win. Nobody was nobody got robbed here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 
One down, my friend. Six to go in the first tie. That's one and O for Noor Magomedov School. Adila Abdul Jalil. We have round one of the second match. Magamedo, just pull guard against Abdul Jalil Adilov from Universal Fighters. So far, 1 0 for Nur Magamedo MMA School. Let's see how this one goes. So don't be confused with the color bars here, with the scorecards. The yeah. red fighter is the universal yeah. fighter. They're all dressed uh, in red attire, just to clarify that. So we have a Noor Magomedov MMA school fighter yet again pulling guard here and mm -hmm. playing guard. They so surprised me with the guard play. That's a flipping yeah. the script, isn't it? I'm like, what? I'm <laughs> expecting some takedowns and guys I'm checking I guess there's um, some comments sure. in, the, in the live section here on you love reading Flora. those comments yeah. don't you I, I like when people talk some <laughs> criticism <laughs> you know <laughs> give it all guys give it all we're listening maybe we, we answer some interesting question to make it more more interesting so I'm really, I, I really can't wait to see the match, uh, how the Dagestanis will do against, against Madolfo. Madolfo. That's yeah. I think everybody is really anticipating to see those fights. <laughs> Someone wrote Nurmagomedov guard fullers. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> they should change the, the name of the team, huh? Yeah, super interesting. I'm so surprised. So far, both of them pull guard. I'm like, oh. what? Points. Okay. So, guys, for those of you just tuned in, First two minutes, no points. Then Except points for takedowns, though. Except if you do takedown, take there is points. Is this live? Yes, it is. Yeah, I am reading right now YouTube chat. So bring it on, guys. No, Habib is not. Will, uh, he will not be competing. I just. But we're still waiting they're, they're to just, see him. Huh? <laughs> I, I I talked to the guys ba on uh, on uh, backstage. They said he's not coming. He's not coming. Yeah, something happened. Like um, um, something with his family or something. I don't know. He's not. He's not coming. He was supposed to come for this uh, business forum, but unfortunately, he's not. At mm -hmm. least that's what I heard from from the captain of their team. Maybe this is all part of the ploy to surprise us when he comes here. I hope they were so. Keeping it under, keeping it as a secret the whole yeah, time. I hope so. so would be nice. 
I'm still ever the optimist. <laughs> Man, right? I, did I tell the story how I hang out right one time with Habib no. and his team when no. I was purple tell belt? Me. So I went to San Jose Open and one of my friends, I see his story and he's like in AKA and I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? He's like, he's good friends with Habib. And I, um, and I was about to like get like Airbnb or like a hotel room in, mm -hmm. um, in San Jose and the guys, I, I think at that time he was preparing for uh, Ferguson and uh, and Ferguson pulled out. Something happened okay. with him. Yeah. So uh, the guys which were so one, nice. Which time? <laughs> yeah, so many times. Man, time. I actually went to his fight one time, and, and then when he got, uh, when he couldn't make weight, something happened. Remember with the weight, and they yeah. pulled him out. But anyway, I went for San Jose Open or IBGF tournament, and the whole squad was there, and the guys were so nice. They're like, "Hey, you don't need to get the uh, room. Stay with us, you know." And I was just hanging out with them, talking. I remember back then he was asking me, "Like, hey, do you think I deserve brown belt?" <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, man, for sure, you, you, you deserve definitely it. deserve. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the guys were really nice. You know, they were like brotherhood. They're like all training, super disciplined. Uh, do Dagestani family have a rivalry? Somebody asked. No, they're just from the same city, and happen to be that two Dagestani teams here. They're competing. They're all friends. We just had breakfast today. Everybody were hanging out with each other. So Garrett Chance is asking. The points are ABCC. Uh, the answer would be yes. The basis of the points are all from the Submission Fighting World Federation, also known as ADCC, which means that uh, there is a no point segment to the fight, and then as the referee calls out, it will be uh, points from then on. Uh, the point um, allocation is the same as ADCC. The only difference that we have here, well, I mean the, the major difference, because there are a few differences, but the major difference here would be the two points for a takedown counts during the segment of the fight where no points are allocated. So when the fight starts, before the referee um, shouts for points or basically uh, announces the point segment, you can score a clean, you can score a takedown or uh, a uh, a clean takedown. I'm assuming as well, but you would just get the two points for the takedown. So. Yeah. So takedowns, and then another difference that we have with ADCC and, and, and IGA is the turtles. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take someone down and they turtle, if you maintain that control for three seconds, you do get two points, as in ADCC, um, with with sweeps and with takedowns. Uh, if you turtle, mm -hmm. you will not be giving up two points when, when someone takes you down or someone sweeps you. That's Those are the two differences that we have with the, the IGA rule set. Yeah. All right, so we have our second round right here. Again, and again, Nurmagomedov is, is pulling, pulling guard. guard here. Yes, Man, <laughs> playing kind of like reverse de la Hiva. Half guard. Uh, he's doing what he has to do, basically. Yeah, I'm really surprised. You know, in the beginning he was doing de la Hiva and stuff. I was not expecting yeah. this style from them. So, Daoud's trying to connect to more like one under one overpass. These guys, actually, you know, they, they really like this more old school style. Yeah. Being on the knees, very like yeah. closed. Uh, it could be boring sometimes for someone watching, but when you fighting someone like this, it could be really annoying but too because it it's really hard to get under or. You but know. from from this position, when both yeah. knees are on the ground and you can basically enter your head into, mm -hmm. you know, under his arms and get your head under his chin, you're eliminating the leg entanglement mm -hmm. or making it uh, at least more difficult for the fighter um, uh, on the bottom. So. Um, if you're trying to avoid the whole leg lock game, that's one of the game ways to do it, is to keep yeah. both knees on the ground. So, ladies and gentlemen, each round is five minutes, and there are three five-minute rounds. So basically, that's each round can be a fight in itself. Yeah. So we have uh, no point time right now. Again, still new only no only takedowns is points, but yes. they already. On the ground, on the ground so we have points won't count we're here. like 15 seconds away from points to be announced. Like they're gonna say points, and then from there we have points. Double unders from Abdul Jalil. Points. Points, as you can hear, referee next to us. Points. Now we have points on. 
somebody comments was uh, saying like an IDCC, if you pull in guard is a negative point, yeah. which here we don't have that, you can pull guard. You can pull yeah. guard with yeah. connections, yeah. yes. It's like modified yeah. kind of ADCC rule. Yeah. And ADCC, you can pull guard with connections in the finals. Can't, no? You can. In the final, you can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I hope I'm correct. Yeah. I think no. In the final. It's allowed sure? in the final. In the final, I think uh, you can. Yeah. I know we, we were both on jet lag and stuff, but in the final, I think it's a longer time. And remember match, for example, Hafa and Cabrinha. Okay. They were like for, for a long time standing. like. Okay. But in eight... Okay, yeah. <laughs> Look at <laughs> that. Got a double check. Right there. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That, yeah. In the final, you can't. Be In other matches, you can, right? Because first, uh, first half uh, in the ADCC, it's like you could just have submission only match. Yeah. And then points no, what start. I, what, what I mixed up was Iga World Championships. Oh, yeah. You mix up the, the other final, ones, yes. In the final, you could pull guard yeah. with connection, yes. Yeah. That was back in Turkey, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so my mistake, yeah. Hmm. Somebody asking, when are the matches of the Madolfo team expected to start? Uh, you're going to have to wait for five and a half more matches. Yes. It's this one, and then five more matches. After that, the Madolfo guys. Yeah. They're fighting the team at Leon. Team at Leon. I also heard that there's going to be some little kids in between uh, teams fighting. I love that. When I yeah? saw that, that yeah. was so amazing. Um, giving, you know, at, at this stage with, with these fighters, giving the youngsters the opportunity to come and compete, uh, that's going to make, it's going to be big for their careers. It's going to be awesome. I saw the, I saw the ad last night. Uh, I'm really excited for that. I sent it back to all my, you know, my boys back in my, mm -hmm. my own school, uh, uh, my own gym. I'm like, look at what these guys are doing here. Yeah. This is just amazing. So we've got um, the, the, uh, Guard passing game, well, still has uh, is not. To be honest, yet not so much <laughs> excited matches so far. Mm, well, we're just getting started. <laughs> uh, we gotta settle in. But I'm <laughs> waiting for some <laughs> other guys. Yeah. Except for a, yeah. a few of the leg entanglements, this is a copy, carbon yeah. copy of the previous fight, basically. Yeah. Even with the same fight, so we got a, a leg entanglement, but that's the second round there. Remember the, the previous event that was in June when we had Team Asahi Republic? Yeah. They started strong, right? There were a lot of finishes. Yeah. yeah. Second and third round, and um, hoping to see more action in the third round. Let's see. Otherwise, this will go to referee decision as the first match went. Um, I believe, in general, the favorite in this um, in this match here is supposed to be not in this match, like a team matchup, is Universal Fighters. But so far. Um, they could lose this one if it goes the same way and uh, we can get like referee decision and uh, then it would get harder and harder. Um, so let's see how this match goes. Round Is he gonna pull three. guard again? Let's see. Ooh, single leg attack. All right, let's see. If he takes him down and holds, there's gonna be points. We have. So it's no points yeah. section here, but yeah. remember that uh, take the takedown does count. So we have wizard. Ooh, wizard. Yeah. No, no points. No points. Here, but and he's gonna pull guard right now. Look. <laughs> you think Again. he's gonna pull guard now? Let's see. 
I think he's going to have to switch up the strategy a little bit. It would be nice if they, if, if both of them stay a little bit and try to take down. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Single leg attempt. Oh, he's going to take him down. Not yet. Huh? There we go, two points. Nice. We have some action now. So that, if, if this stays, that bags the fight for um, Magomedov from Nur Magomedov school. Ref, we need points. Yeah, we got it. It's 2-0. Two, two oh. No, just now. Just now, literally. I saw them. They're oh, right okay. next to me, yeah. We're right next to referees, <laughs> so we can remind them. Yeah, yeah. If we see something, uh -huh. just give them yeah. a nudge. Hey, hey, sir. Okay, point starting now. So the fighter from Universal Fighters uh, also competed in, um, I think it was the last round of the Champions League there. He's got two wins. They are the, the champions of they the, are, yeah. yeah. So they're like uh, reigning champions. They're the reigning champions they're here to defend mm. their title. So if Abdul, uh, what is it? If if Daoud, who's on bottom, wins this round, pretty much done deal. 2-0 for Team Nurmagomedov. That's it. Yeah. The first so two rounds. Knew, were, uh, so, so the first Abdu two rounds were close. Yeah. Uh, but however, because he's winning the third round, yeah, that bags the fight for him. Yeah. So let's see, uh, Abdul Jalil. He needs to push the pace. Oh, he's holding him down. He seems tired though, a little bit. Is he going to get the pass? Yes. Nope. He needs to get 50% of the body. It looks like he's going to get it. He will. That's... Man, he's going to be yet, so tired. Not yet, not yet. He's, he's going to get it. He's got to get the shoulders on the ground. He already he got, got points, yeah. 3 2. Yes. Now, what a twist now at the end. Let's see. Now things are getting a bit more exciting. I hope they're not just going to try to stall this one out. I believe Abdul Jalil should try to advance a bit more. I think. Oh, look, there's a. Oh, man, there was back take opportunity. He's just going to try to stall this out, I think. Going back in the middle. I was hoping to see some back take action. See here. 20 seconds left. Will we have 1-1 one, one or no? The team wise. Uh, nothing's team gonna happen in 10 seconds, bro. That's it, one and one. Yeah. That, but that was, you know, that was close. That was that nice, was, yeah. But it seems yeah. like he got really tired. Like I saw Daoud's like kind of breathing hard. Mm. All right. All right. So one and one. The champions are yeah. on the scoreboard, the defending champions. But. So one one so far. Good, uh, good guard game from um, from the Nuno Gamba fighters. Abdul Jalil won this one. But that would surprise us with some guard game in the first two rounds. 
seen, look at him, he seems very exhausted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was a lot of pressure, you yeah. know, it's 15 minutes, bro. That's a 15-minute yeah. match. High altitude. And he's yeah. been, he, he was playing guard and uh, the Universal Fighter, uh, Universal Fighter's uh, competitor was basically uh, going for that pass a good portion of all rounds, uh, of all three rounds, so... You're gonna feel the pressure after, you know, a 15 minute match, you're in the 10th, 12th minute. It's not just uh -huh. like a five minute or a six minute roll at the club with, you know, with your buddies. You're gonna feel the pressure in the 12th minute. Yeah. So we're one and one, that's it. Yeah. Representing Team Nurmagomedov, Ibrahimov, Magomed. Magomed Ibrahimov from Nurmagomedov team and Ruslan Abdullayev, Universal Fighters. Um, I just had breakfast today this morning with Ruslan Abdullayev and he actually just came back from his MMA fight. He we had were, MMA fight last we night. We were sitting at the same table with yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he had an MMA fight and he just flew yesterday and ready for this one. Uh -huh. He was calling out Gordon. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> However, um, he's very experienced in UWW and um, the AGP rule set and stuff. Good wrestling. Let's see how he does against this Magomed Ibrahimov. I'm surprised he pulled guard first. So. Ruslan playing half guard on bottom. We are 45 seconds away from points. Magomed is trying to stay so really low. So this is low. the third fight. We're yeah. one and one for um, each, uh, each team. They got uh, a breadstick on the scorecard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they all playing half guard, staying low. Yeah. That style, you know? Yeah, definitely. Oh, Ruslan is gonna go for leg locks. Shin back. We'll get it. Yeah, five seconds before points. You can just use that and come up for a sweep. So we're in the po uh, points, points now. second of the yeah. fight now. And exactly as you mentioned, he. Maintain that position. Someone asking who up. is Team Habib. The guys in black, black and white rush guard is Team Habib, and the guys in red are Universal Fighters. Yeah, the Team Habib fighter is Magomed Ibragimov, 
and Ruslan, uh, who is a, uh, a, a well-known face here, this side of competing on the circuits, this side of the yeah. world, as you mentioned, um, AJP, UWW. This, yeah. The problem is that these guys, they, they don't get the opportunity to get visa to go to US. Yeah. Oh, nice guard pass. Uh, will we get it? E I yeah. love that. Yeah. The kickback nice is back so, it, yeah. It, it, it's so, yeah, the back step, it's so explosive. Yeah. So the team captain of the Nurmagomedov team is uh, the guy over there, Murad M Machayev. Murad. Yeah, Machayev. Yeah. He's also... Uh, he's the ex-MMA fighter. I actually used to train before I moved to US. I right? used to train nice. with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a little bit. You know, I was there like a total beginner with professional fighters just surviving there. And that's how I kind of, you know, later wanted to try Jiu-Jitsu. I first saw him at the ACBJJ Worlds in yeah. Moscow. He, yeah, he, he won, I think, ACBJJ World. His, yeah. In his weight class, yeah, yeah. he did. Have Ruslan so here. W um, I would question here why the two points were not given to Ruslan because for that, coming up that second where we were talking about mm -hmm. he did maintain the position. They went into the point segment and then he had his opponent's leg um, scooped up and he just came up. So mm -hmm. why no points here? We can ask the referees later. They're kind enough to explain to us, but. I thought So we're reading the YouTube comments here who's commentating. Uh, my name is Badia Honada. I'm a first degree black belt from Iran and uh, I'm joined with Mr. Sa ACB himself. No, 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 I'm the ACB himself. <laughs> ACB legend uh, of super fight a promoter and black belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, first degree from Checkmat, uh, Mr. Saeed Dunkaev, who's joining us uh, also on the commentating uh, team. We also have uh, some famous commentators, some familiar voices that will be joining us later on. Uh, today we have um, Brandon and Hal. Mm -hmm. um, they are regulars basically on the Jiu-Jitsu scene uh, in, uh, in North America. Yeah. They will also be joining us, so we're going to be switching it up a little bit. To make it dif different? Make it, yeah. In, yeah, so you guys don't have to bear our voices for yeah. <laughs> seven and a half hours. Yeah, <laughs> complaining. <laughs> well, we have here Ruslan trying to pass the guard. We have 15 seconds left. Well, to be honest with you, Magomed is kind of breathing hard. I'm curious to see how, how his conditioning is going to do like later in the rounds. All right, we have 0-0 zero, zero again. Oh. What was that? Oh, they just, they just want to officially send it. Gordon Ryan will commentate. Someone asked me. No. <laughs> Gordon Ryan will <laughs> not commentate. <laughs> Modolfa team will make it look easy, somebody says. You know what? Before this tournament started, I was thinking that maybe that the Universal the Fighters would, would be giving, like, uh, this is what I think. Um, I think they will take at least, they, they will beat at least a couple of guys from Modolfa team. But so far, the performance they have, um, I don't know. I feel like Modolfo mm, team, yeah. you know, we'll see. It's really interesting, you know, a lot of things that play. How they're gonna, how they're gonna feel, like how their conditioning will be. Because a lot of people complain here that it's like, it's like they're not, like it's high altitude, you know, they're, they're, they're getting tired fast. So um, we'll see. The manager from Universal Fighters, uh, we just had him on the screen a couple of minutes ago. He is uh, Magomed Abdul Kadyrov. Yeah. He is also a... Uh, ADCC veteran. ADCC veteran, Jiu-Jitsu veteran, black belt. He used to... Uh, we used to compete on the same circuit mm -hmm. back in 2015. We were both no. purple belts. Does that Man, make he's really good. I remember when they took him. Too? They, yeah. They, yeah, remember <laughs> they, they took him to Manaus to compete against uh, Mika Galwao when Mika Galwao was, was a like a blue belt. belt. Yeah. So it was kind of like uh, in Brazil to take uh, Magomed Abdul Kadyrov oh. against him to beat like Dagestani black belt. Man, he submitted Mika Galwao like in one minute. In taking minute, it yeah, back. yeah. 
That was I, a long I, time honestly, ago. I remember watching that match, still thinking like maybe Mika will win, but yeah. he surprised me so good. Uh -huh. And uh, he's the captain here. I'm surprised he's not fighting like, himself. Yeah, yeah, because he's like he very could do like he's, yeah, he's very he's high, level. high level. He had match. a close match with Lovato and ADCC in Rio. I remember that. He, he beat, beat Benson, Benson Henderson. Henderson. Yeah, choked him. Um, almost took back of Lovato. It was like a really close match. He's you know they beat uh, Greg Jones one time in Kazakhstan. You know that? When? Yeah, when when Greg Jones was um, like a skinny guy. <laughs> oh, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but he was competing all over. Like they, he Skinny, can't, Craig, yeah, skinny yeah. Craig Jones. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's been all over the place. I mean, he's been fighting everywhere. I mean, uh, it's a good good word you used. Uh, he's definitely one of the veterans. I think he, at one point, the Craig was like a BGJ travel or something. He was just traveling a lot, competing, and he came with the Lachlan Giles. Mm -hmm. uh, did I say his name correctly? Lachlan, Lachlan uh, Giles? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, he fought against uh, two guys from Universal Fighters. That was uh, Bilal of uh, Abdurrahman and um, Abdul Kadiro, which is the, the, um, the captain of the team, Universal Fires, and he, they both beat him at that time. Yeah. I mean, Greg is way better now than well, back then. Obviously, yeah. yeah. So we are in. Um, this is fight number three. We're yeah. one and one, and this second is round. second round of. Yeah, same scenario, half guard. Yes. We are now in a point zone. This is a Somebody asking, why is this on YouTube? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Man, I, I, I was know. actually <laughs> trying to find um, like a like a comment or something so I can engage yeah, with, uh, I think with he, people. Uh, you know? What you mentioned, Said, earlier is that a portion of this will be... Yeah, that's what I, I heard. I think they're going to cut the feed when Team Adolfo comes Yeah, out. could be. <laughs> that's what I'm guessing. Could be. Maybe just keep it um, at least for now for this one. And I think it's too early in U.S. Like in California, it started at 4 a.m. The events are 4 a.m. Yeah. Um, probably right now. Let me check the time in California. Since it's Los Angeles time. 5, 5 a.m. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Eastern time would be like three hours forward, which is eight. Yeah. Math is still okay. Somebody says, no, Craig is definitely undefeated. <laughs> then it should be 18. So is Chael Craig Sonnen. Jones. So Craig is Jones cannot lose. So is Chael Sonnen. Yeah. He's undefeated, isn't he? <laughs> Craig Jones is definitely undefeated. Especially on Instagram. On, in, on the, the internet, <laughs> he is undefeated. Undisputed, undefeated. <laughs> yes, almost broke Gordon's arm. And that was crazy when Gordon the, and they what did, what the did the EBI uh, one? Yeah, the EBI when they fight? had like overtime. Mm. Man, Gordon's tough. Oh, we have. Man, Magomed is breathing hard, man. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's taking. Oh. Yes, stand up. Almost. I think Ruslan will pull it off at the end. Like uh, either this this round or next round, definitely. It seems more more fresh. But anything can happen. The Don't take my word. Yeah, yeah. Last, the last, last fight kind of happened like that as well. Yeah. So the plus ninety one kilogram fight. Uh, the fights are not. In a specific order, they had a draw to oh, pick. He's entering. Blah, blah, blah. He's Let's got see. a deep half. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 Looks oh, like oh. he's gonna get it. Let's see. He needs to get his side yeah. or yeah, the yeah. back. Yeah. He, it, so he, what we were talking about earlier was the issue of the turtle. Mm -hmm. If he gets the both. Uh, if he turtles uh, his opponent basically mm -hmm. in that position and you maintain the three point contact, you will be getting the two points. Yeah. Unlike ADCC. Yeah. So there we have two points here. This would not be a point scoring position in an ADCC yeah. tournament. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, we're a little bit. Um, I, I was going to say we're a little bit behind on the, on the time, seconds. No. But Second round is over. Ruslan Abdullayev is the winner of this round. We have 1-0 so far uh, on the rounds. First one was draw, yeah. second one this. So still the fight, uh, you know, it's it's yeah. up for grabs. Um, if uh, the fighter from Nurmagomedov MMA school 
uh, wins via submission or um, if he gets a substantial lead in the third round, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, a chance that he could get uh, the uh, the referee decision and uh, and win this one. But by the way things are going, um, Ruslan has been the aggressor definitely yeah. in, in you know almost every second of the uh, uh, most portion of the fight. He's been going for the sweeps. He's been attempting the takedowns. He tried some leg entanglements. So I think if Magomed wants to pull this one off, he needs to he needs to get a submission. Yeah. Round three. <laughs> Someone saying, "What do you want the commentators to do?" The guys, we're just trying to engage with you guys because there's. Excuse me. Uh, no, someone was asking, like, yeah. what do you guys want? Like, someone was defending us, saying, like, yeah. what do you want what us, do to, want say? us <laughs> to say? Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to engage with you guys, because so far it's, it's more like strategic fights. Not much Not happening. Much action. Yeah. Not if yet. we're just going to sit here and watch with you guys, we're always going to complain. This we're going to tell you some stories. What's happening here? Why are they taking break and saying hello? Yo. <laughs> what Shout, <was> out. <laughs> Shout out to our teams. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Hopefully we have the. Um, when Ma I'm really excited to see Modolfo team Me against too. Dagestan. Me too. And we're gonna have today two more team matchups. It's right? gonna be yeah next. That's gonna be Modolfo. The next tie will yeah. be Modolfo versus Alion. Yeah. And then we have. Uh, Nur Magomedov Nur team Magomedov against versus Modolfo. Modolfo. Yeah, that would be interesting. And we yeah. have a. Oh. Like a saddle attack. position, yes, yes. Here it was uh, initiated over the, uh, the honey hole there. Yeah. Reset to the middle. Thank you. Somebody said you guys are doing great. Thank you. I appreciate the support. Guys, if you have some questions in the in the YouTube live chat, we're listening. I know you guys are like fighting each I other. I like the commentators. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We like you too. Yes. Doing our Giving best. the love right back. I agree with you. I like the commentators yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where are you guys? Uh, right? Where are you guys all from? You know, everyone's like from. W w Sight loves. Yeah. Loves. Yeah. Be I like to engage with, with the crowd. The, yeah, with the crowd. You know, it makes it more interesting. Good I cop, think. bad cop. He's yeah. the good cop. If yeah. if, <laughs> if oh. we were detectives, you would be the good cop. Yeah. Someone said all the Dagestani pulled so far. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, but Ruslan is uh, he he pulled guard. You know, he's he's more like a jujitsu guy. He has good wrestling. The one on bottom, he with the um, with the red uniform. He's actually uh, pretty good in, in grappling. Man, Texas, Australia, nice. USA, Turkey, New Zealand, Bel Belgium, Malaysia. Damn, all over the world. Everybody's watching, huh? That's nice. Japan, American, UK, Switzerland, Belgium, Norway. Friends. Edging him. South Carolina. He's inviting Romania, him into the Kyrgyzstan. garden. Man, very nice. That's Asking beautiful. Asking him to go in. <laughs> yeah. People all over the world united, um, you know, watching jiu-jitsu events. So hopefully we get a nice event. We have, what, we have a stalling warning right here for Magomed? Yes. Is it 20 seconds stalling? Is it 20 or 15 seconds? Okay, so what happened here is, did you see, did you, did you, um, Zaid, watch the sequence here. Mm -hmm. So Magomed went he came for, up, huh? no, he went huh? for a straight footlock and, uh, and Rustan yeah. comes on top. So but it's a bad strategy for Magomed because I think Rustan would be having better, on top, he's going to be passing, he's gonna passing yeah. his guard. Yeah. But what happened here was that, that no points will be allocated to that because of submission attempt. the submission attempt. Yeah. He initiated the, the move, uh, the sequence, so... Uh, the fighter who comes on top will not be awarded two points. Mm -hmm. Oh, Magomed's getting a uh, stalling warning. Again? Yeah. Second time. I mean, it doesn't affect points right now, right? Not but yet. They might give him negative. Or they give points well, to the upper. Well, yeah, if the, count, if the yeah. clock counts down. I'm not sure if the viewers are getting the clock right here, but if the Ooh, clock counts. Toe hold attempt, look. Okay, he went for that one, didn't he? Mm hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was surprising. 
and back to guard. No points here. And that's show. a clean sweep, so yeah. that's four points. That's four points. Four yeah. points. Wow. Nice. Now he's gonna and that was a nice, nice and timed sweep. Yeah. That sweep, where um, you have one leg extended and you roll up on your shoulder, you have to time it mm -hmm. exactly. He's trying to get right. submission right here. Look, it's look. over. I mean, the fight basically. He's got two rounds. He's two rounds up, so uh, he's putting Universal Fighters two one up in the third mm -hmm. fight of the first tie. So. Let's remind the viewers how many total matches we have. We have seven fights. Seven this matches. would be the third one mm -hmm. from the first tie. So it's going to be 2-1 for Universal Fighters. That means we have four more fights. If Universal Fighters win two more fights, they take it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Nurmagomedov uh, MMA team has to win three fights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get Ahmed the crowd, is breathing hard. Get the crowd engaged here. Come on, crowd. <laughs> the winner, Ruslan Abdullayev. Someone asked me, when are the children matches? Are they between team matches? Uh, or between I think, I think there will be five team. youth matches, which will be after the first. Yeah. Uh, first tie is over before the Madolfo fight start. Uh -huh. You can check on uh, everybody uh, who's not familiar with the Smooth Comp platform. Yeah. You can go to smoothcomp.com, go to upcoming events, and search for IGA Champions League. Mm -hmm. If you go to the bracket section, you will have access to all the fights. Uh -huh. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm checking right now. So after the Madolfo fights, we have five youth fights, mm -hmm. three, four, and five. Got and it. then the last, and so the, the intermission will be the youth fights. So Team Adolfo gets a rest, and mm -hmm. then they come back and they will be fighting against uh, Nur Magomedov MMA school to wrap up the third tie of the day. Yeah. So next fight will be somebody, minus some, 67 kilograms, yes? Yeah, somebody asked, why didn't we know about Aiga when B Team competed? Well, it's up to you guys. <laughs> Why didn't you know? Because well, it was a, it was everywhere on the net. Um, yeah. We were live on YouTube. Hold on, let's wait for the announcement. We have a round one of the fourth match. This is a fourth match, minus two 76 one. kilograms, 2-1 Universal Fighters. Uh, we have Mr. Bagir Gasratov. He's a 28-year-old Russian black belt from Agat team. They fight out of Mahachkala. Yeah, from Dagestan. Uh, Dagestan. Uh, he is an Abu Dhabi Grand Slam Jiu-Jitsu World Tour champion uh, at Moscow. Gold medal at Brown Belt. Also, he is a UWW European gold medalist and a UWW 2019 Worlds gold medalist. Mm -hmm. So he's also um, from an MMA team, from an M MMA background, but he also has the jiu-jitsu pedigree to match it. Yeah. He's got his black belt. Uh, he's uh, competed, you know, in uh, the UWW events. The UWW events are tough events because there are no belt um, rankings. There are no mm -hmm. belt denominations and categories there, so you could start competing there as a blue belt, and your first opponent might be a black belt. Yeah. 
So it's really uh, it's a tough one to uh, to medal uh, at those tournaments, let alone getting uh, gold. We see more action in this one so far. The guys started really hot. Hopefully this continues. Definitely more movement. I was expecting just a pull guard and half guard and, and we actually <laughs> back to half guard and being on the knees. All of these guys going to have this style, guys. Um, when I went actually home to train with a lot of guys, like I'm used to in US training with people playing X guard, De La Hiva, and mm -hmm. everyone is just going on the knees. And, and, and honestly, you know, it's so annoying. Like for me, I was like, man, I got to train more of this stuff and kind of annoying fight someone was like really closed and like you know doesn't engage much and it's your job also to know how to beat someone like that you know yeah. it might be boring style but if you get too frustrated you might get that's, swept that's, yeah, yeah you know sure. but right now we have man this guy's really pushing the pace um usually we point, see that look, in, uh, we, in might, we might see some flying submission let's see you guys moving around I hope so. Let's in the see. mid, you know, in the mid 70 kilogram sections, mm -hmm. it's 77, look, 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 76 sometimes. Look, 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 look. We definitely see, yeah. you know, more action. Uh, the guys, uh, you know, they, they they push the pace a little more. Yeah. These guys definitely showing more interest in jiu-jitsu. Look, there's more, more, more risking, more attacking. We have Omoplata uh, attempt. Uh, half Omoplata there, on, almost. Yeah, Bagir is on bottom from uh, okay, the team. And he's, that's, ooh, that's a textbook yeah. attack there. When yeah. you have the Omoplata, the guy tries to step over, you catch yep. the close leg in a toe hold. Oh, look at the goal. That's definitely, that's two points, isn't it? What happened? There's some a clothing malfunction, I think. No, he's complaining about his ankle. What happened? He's asking a doctor. There's the doctor. Oh, that's a I friend. Remember, remember him? That's, yeah. our, that's our buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the doc right there. Yeah. I think he's. We made friends with that dog. Yeah, I think his toe got caught yeah. in yeah. Um, uh, Gasnatov's uh, rash guard. Okay, so a little discussion I on how the game started, the referees are saying, but yeah, it seems like something. Points, those of you who are just joining us, the two points there are for uh, the sweep attempt. Well, it was not an, uh, basically not an attempt; it was a successful attempt where he scooped up um, Rashid's leg. Gastrotov scooped up mm -hmm. his leg during one of the leg entanglements and just came up, and it was just. Oh, what oh, happened? Okay. Oh, what? If you're winner, and you're not a dog. What happened? The team score is now tied. Two enemies. So let's take a look at the replay of what happened here. We had uh, the, uh, the coach of Universal Fighters complaining about uh, that decision right there. Magomed Abdul Kadirov was here complaining to the judges. I don't know what happened, really, to be honest. I thought they stopped the fight. I honestly don't know why, why he lost that match. Or maybe it was like considered as a ter verbal tap. Okay, we have a head judge. Yeah. I just talked to, to us. A little we'll just talk to the here, so yeah, a little confusion. Happened? So, so um, he. Uh, he complained, I mean, a fighter claims that his toes got stuck and he hurt a little bit his toe. Okay. But according to a rule, this is like a verbal tap. Sure. You know, if you hurt and, you know, and you tap, you can't just in the middle of the match be like, you know what I mean? But if, what if your toe does get stuck and the, there's a clothing malfunction? The ref does have the, author, uh, the uh, authorization and the authority to stop it, 
to get it out and restart the fight. So yeah. I think really this was a little confusing yeah, here. I'm sure the fighter from Universal Fighters did not know that he would be losing the yeah, match like that. Kinda, if he did, yeah. he would not have said stop. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I would have kept it with 2-0 and, and continue. From Universal right? Fighters, and the guys were going to show a good match, in my opinion. Yeah, that one, uh, I say that's a shame yeah. it ended like that. Yeah, it's you never want to see like anybody, that, yeah. you know, uh, uh, end a fight in that condition, in that situation. But in a way, you know, it's like a verbal tap too, you know, it's kind of, depends where you stand. Yeah. You know, some people can use it as a as a cheating for a timeout as well. You know, so you kind of you know, the refs did everything by the playbook at the end of the day, too. Don't you think? Um, I I I would say the rules are the rules, but there was some leeway to stop that fight yeah. and it allow depends them how to, you look at it. Yeah, to you know, restart it. Unfortunate that it happened like that. But anyhow, on we, we go. Yeah. Minus ninety one. We have uh, Murat Ramazanov from. Yeah. Uh, Nurma Gamarev MMA school. He's a 27-year-old MMA fighter and yeah. a Sambo fighter. His MMA record is 11 and 0. Yeah, he. I watched his interview. He he, he wanted um, also from Dallas Stone, Russia. Yeah, and he was. Uh, I think he was having beef with Hamzat Chimaev. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like, man, this guy looks familiar. Then I remember him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. He I was think, having. I he was having beef with Hamzat Chimaev, like uh, not at the event at the UFC, but the, he was. Um, I think there was some misunderstanding. Hamza Chimaev said something in a, in a, in a YouTube live or, or like Instagram live, something that uh, about Habib that, that or someone asked, it said like Habib would smash you and he said, no, I would smash him. And, it, and, and then and, the, and, guys, and the media interpreted it like, in, sure. oh, like Hamza is saying mm. that at the end, uh, Hamza was saying like, hey, I'm, I'm just saying like, hey, I'm a fighter, you know, mm. I'm not going to be, gonna I'm not going to let anyone be smashing me. So it's like, yeah. you know, like, a, but anyway. I, that's how I remember seeing this guy in, in, in a black rush guard. Um, you know, he's actually, you know, good MMA fighter. You said, like, his record, like, that, what, 11 yeah, and 0? It, yeah. Um, and uh, Gajur he's Murad Abdul, Abdullayev he's, is an universal uh, team. From, the, from Nurmagomedov school, Murad. Yeah. He's a Russian, European, and, and world UWW grappling champion. Yeah. And also, he's got a gold in Naga. I think I yeah. saw one of those events back in it was in Pennsylvania or somewhere where yeah. he also had like one of those swords the Naga swords <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so so he definitely has the the, the jiu-jitsu pedigree down also mm -hmm. Gaji Murat in the red rush guard he's also uh, MMA fighter by the yeah, way I know him yeah he's a purple belt okay yeah he's a he's a one of those familiar faces we've seen a lot at least on um, on social media, you know, with some clips from the MMA fights from the the Russian fighters. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with the comments? <laughs> <laughs> Someone says 11 and no, but none of his opponents has Wikipedia record. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, these guys don't know. Honestly, like, look, um, the guys who fight in Russia, like. Man, it's it's a tough. Um, there's tough organization. People like. People think like, hey, you know, it's like some easy matches. It's not. It's not, not the case. A lot of them are juiced to the gills, <laughs> you know, and uh, and just, the, some of them are gilled to yeah. the juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm originally from Chechnya, but I'm, you know, I know from that area, and then sure. and I know, you know, that I mean, there's a lot of guys who have really good genetics, and people think like, oh, because from Russia that they all like on steroids, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are on steroids too. You know, like anywhere in the world, like all the, all the, um, you know, like professional events, they have that issue, and you know. What do you think about the issue of steroids and jujitsu? I I, I think, whatever, keep it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think at the end of the day, if like for example, UFC making USAD and stuff, or we have a single leg attempt right here. Let's Oh, let's see. Hopefully they don't fall on us. They're getting close to us, guys. Oh, nice. Ooh. So going back to steroids, I think the guys who have a lot of money can yeah. always find a way to avoid it. Okay. You know, um, to avoid getting caught. Avoid getting caught. Okay. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, cheaters will cheat. You know, 
and I believe some older guys, it would be nice for them to have like a longer career, more healthier, you know. It depends how you look at it. MMA, you know, it's kind of dangerous because you can literally like, you know, knock someone out and kill, you know, this can happen too. Of course, a freak accident can happen in Jiu-Jitsu too. But Jiu-Jitsu and just grappling sports is like, whatever, in my opinion, it's like, if, they want, if somebody wants to do it, I don't really care. I don't think the current guys who are like world champion and stuff, if you take away juice from them, that the, the juice didn't make them champions. That's what I believe. That's what I'm saying. You know, like they, they can be champions because they, they train smart, the psychology is there, you know. So people call Gordon, for example, oh, he's on juice. And so, I, I mean, I think he's still do, do good without it either, you know. But of course, it gives some, of course, it gives you some, some benefit. Some? Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot, a lot of benefits. Yeah. Yeah. But I, man, I, a lot of people give too much credit to steroids. I've seen people on steroids can't win nothing. You know? Definitely. Yeah. So it's not just steroids. Of course, it's a big plus, but there's a lot of people who go with steroids. Everything in the world, every alphabet of chemistry they put in themselves and they can't win. I've seen guys like that too. And they train hard. So, not always just there. That's all I'm saying, you know? I know so guys who are naturally good. I know guys who are juicing. Either way, you know, to me personally, I don't care, you know? It's like, MMA is a different story, you know, someone's life on the, like, you know, you get punched in the face and stuff, you know, but that's, I hope I answer your question. Uh, I just yeah. wanted to get your opinion. I mean, yeah, everybody has a stance regarding this whole issue, but um, it's not just the issue of... Uh, I wouldn't want, sorry for interrupt, I, would, I, I don't like the idea how a lot of Brazilians or any other nationalities, but I, I hear, I have a lot of friends in Brazil, like they start really early doing yeah. testosterone and stuff. I think that's bad. If you're doing it, it has to be smart. When your natural testosterone declining, and uh, there's a smart way of doing it, like, you know, so you can kind of say, it actually can be healthy in some ways. Yeah. But when you're like 15, 16, when you have a natural, like, growth, you know, and, you know, to me, Jiu-Jitsu World Champion title is not that important to ruin my health. You know what I mean? That's what I think. For some people, it is. You know, they, they just rather have that, you know, and put their life on the line like you know health health risks mm -hmm. so i'm not judging anyone whoever do. it's their life they can do but what do we have here so so the first round was close there were mm -hmm. two takedown attempts for each of the fighters so we're in we're in a draw into yeah. the second round so no one pulling this one we don't have no half guard action yeah. we're gonna have a resting match with this one I think both of, both of these guys are more, definitely like more top players. Nobody wants to be on bottom. I mean, it's very obvious they don't so want to So this is the it. fifth fight. We're two and two right now. Yeah. Um, a little, I wouldn't say controversy, but a little confusion with the fight that we had in the minus uh, 70, uh, 76 kilogram fight. Um, that basically, uh, draw out the score, so we're two and two going into the fifth fight. So whoever takes this fight is just one win away from the first tie, Saeed. Mm -hmm. Speak to me. What are the comments saying? Oh man, I don't even read comments. I try to engage with these people. Mm -hmm. They're always complaining. So I'm gonna just commentate the match. They're complaining? What are yeah. they complaining about? No, not everybody. I'm not going to mention But whatever. <laughs> Somebody even wrote the worst commentators ever. I'm like, oh, we have a takedown here. I mean, one bad apple, we're not going to judge it. But someone please pull guard. Hold on. I'm not reading everything, but... <laughs> Mike, you think you can do a better job? Yeah, let's bring Mike here and he's going to be commenting. Mike, the... Yeah, someone Mike here in the yeah. commentator. Yeah. He's just a complainer, I think. Let's see, now it's interesting. Man, it's really getting interesting. So far, it's 2-2 by the teams. And maybe Nurmagomedov team will pull this one off and then it's 2-3. And we have two matches so left. So, you know, that this is a repeat of the, the finals from last year. 
Mm -hmm. The last Champions League was Nurmagomedov MMA school versus Universal Fighters. So if Nurmagomedov wins, Nurmagomedov MMA school wins this one. Yeah. Thank uh, you guys. There are some guys saying good stuff about our no. family. They're defending us. After, Thank uh, you guys. If Nurmagomedov <laughs> wins this one, they will be avenging the loss from the finals last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the, I'm sure the commentary can smash my keyboard warrior. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's okay, Mike. All love. I'm going to keep it positive. Let's enjoy some action here. Let's see. From my view, I thought it was a guard pass and it was just still half guard. So after this match, we have... If this one goes 3-2 in terms of teams, then this would be really interesting. Whoever takes this one is just gonna, one win away gonna go from for, the first time. Yeah, look, look, he's gonna Regardless go for of whoever wins it, though, they're gonna have to fight all. They will yeah, fight everyone all seven has to fights. fight everybody, yeah. guys. If you if you curious how it goes here, so there's four teams, and everyone will fight each other. Uh, we have um, two day event, three mat three team uh, matches today and three team matches tomorrow. So everyone will end up fighting each other, and um, the most accumulated points, right? gonna get like a first or second place and they go if into the semi-final and finals in December. Yeah, if like if the win-loss mm -hmm. numbers are the same or close, then they, they're gonna go down to submissions and then uh, that's how they're gonna break it down. Yeah. Someone says, rules seem confusing. You want to repeat? Because more people are joining. So the, we have a three. Uh, I'm going to start some part of it. The more confusing part, I'll leave to you. Okay? So we have three rounds. Uh, each round is five minutes with one minute break in between. We have first two minutes of each round. Uh, it's pretty much no point zone. However, if somebody does takedown and score takedown, that's count so the only takedowns count but anything else doesn't count you can pull guard in no point zone as long with as you're connected connection. to uh, you have like a grips and then last three minutes it's point zone um, the the rule set is something similar to ADC with slight uh, modification wow. my friend Baria here will explain some of the parts w once again for those of you who just uh, tuned in and uh, yeah here we go yeah, okay, so um, uh, as we were mentioning earlier, the, the differences with ADCC, those who know the rule set of ADCC will find it uh, easier to, uh, to understand what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, just Seems the no-point like zone, takedowns do count, as Sai just mentioned. And another difference would be, uh, if it comes up, I'll, I'll try not to make it too confusing right now, if it comes up during the match, uh, we'll emphasize more on that, it, and it's happening right now, which is the turtle position which does count for two points, exactly. So there we get the two points. Uh, this would not be uh, a So in ADCC, position. in the turtle this position, no points, points, right? This is zero points. Zero but, points. But, but here, here we have, so that's the, the difference with The turtle position yeah. with three-point contact does count as a takedown or a sweep uh, for the, uh, the initiating fighter. So we've got two points in the first two minutes where only takedowns count. So that's what happened right now. Yeah. It's three rounds. For each fight, three five-minute rounds, whoever wins 
more of the rounds regardless of the point differentiation. The point uh, will take it so you can lose one round 1-0 one and you can win the other round 25-0. Mm -hmm. You'll be tied. It'll be yeah. one round each. Some people asking when is the stream going to end. Guys, honestly, we just started uh, streaming and we personally thought it was just on floor grappling, so I don't know if yeah. it's just going to be when the Modolfa team, we're going to switch back to uh, just strictly on floor grappling. Um, we're not sure about that. The next team matches, we're going to switch up uh, commentary, so we're going to be switching up with Howell and who was the other guy named Brandon? Brandon and yeah. Howell. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. And, and we'll come back for another one. Oh man, half guard. Murad Ramazano really pushing the pace here. Someone asking, why is this so early? Well, that's a difference when you have an event um, on the other it's side of the world. It's early for you. It's, really it's 6.30 yeah. p.m. for us yeah. over here. Um, last time when we had an event, we were exclusively for the broadcast. So we actually were early here and uh, it was nighttime, for nighttime for U.S., for US right? Yeah, but US this time um, there is more, um, you know, like an arena with, um, with audience. Um, I mean, on the feed, it doesn't look like a, a lot of people because there's like more people on the background. Um, but it's you know, feeling, it's starting it's feel, to fill start up. Feeling up yeah. Right now, it's starting yeah, it's to kind fill of up. too early. People yeah. like uh, come a bit later, you know, around like what time is it right now? 6:39 here p.m. Yeah, so that's the difference. To answer the question, is the local time is you know as usual. You know how the events go. It start like. If you start early, there's not going to be people here coming for the jiu-jitsu event early in the morning. And the longer time goes, um, you know, it's better for you guys in in U.S., um, depending where you are. California is a bit earlier. So we've got a, uh, a back attack attempt here. Yeah. And still no points, so... Uh, for this uh, for this sequence right now, mm -hmm. and of course uh, no advantages here, so that one hook in doesn't count. Those are for the uh, for the IBJJF fanatics <laughs> who are watching. Uh, somebody messaging that uh, maybe the rule set is not the most exciting. Um, I would say it depends on the competitors because the last event was super exciting. Uh, if you guys are watching the AIGA Global first time, last time we had the team Asai Republic, um, pretty much was the, um, a lot of guys from US and uh, from Brazil. And uh, uh, what was the team battle force? Yeah. B team, which B team actually lost. It yeah. was some surprising matches. Um, and this time we have uh, so far the first match. Um, I kind of was expecting that the two Dagestani teams going together stylistically not going to be the most exciting because most of them use like a little bit more like a old here, here we have a winner. So it's 3-2 yeah. for Nurmagomedov school. Yeah. If they win the next fight, uh, it's over. And they're avenging their loss from the Champions League finals of last season. Yeah. Uh, going back to speaking about the rule set, it's Styles, guys. Styles makes fight. Um, you know, you have uh, pretty much um, the guys who like to play like uh, half guard on the knees, you know, and um, they're more like MMA fighters and wrestlers, so it's a little bit different style. It would be actually nice to see more like high level uh, Jiu Jitsu guys fighting against them to see how they deal. Um, so I'm more really excited to see how the Modolfo guys are gonna do against the. Um, you know, these MMA fighters would be really interesting. Will they just smash them, go through them, or will the guys uh, face some challenge? Yeah, would be really exciting. I hope for the challenge because it would be nicer. But again, I don't mind 
getting quick submissions either because we need them so far it's just points yeah there were no submissions well yeah. there was a verbal top a misinterpreted verbal top i assume and now at 60 kilograms representing key hermagadarov alihan egambiak Shabanov, Megabed. So we're now uh, into the minus uh, 60 kilogram fight. Uh, this would be fight number six, if I'm correct. Joining us now is a man who needs no introduction. How welcome you, your voice is, of course, uh, very familiar with all jiu-jitsu fans across the world. Uh, give us a, uh, an introduction of yourself first and tell us what you think about the event and about the fight cool. so far. Thank you, Padia, but I think I need to save the introduction for later because immediately yeah, the Universal Fighters representative, Shabanov Majadet, is coming out very, very hard and he looks to be very close to finishing this. I think, yes, there is the finish. That's it. Well, that's our first submission of the night. 36 seconds was all it took for Magomed Shabanov to win this match. So this, this just got interesting here. The Fighters are now tied at three all, the two teams. So whoever wins this fight gets You're the first tie and it's oh, over. You know what happened earlier was uh, there was a little confusion with one of the fights where uh, the fighter asked for the ref uh, uh, referee intermission to stop because his toe got caught in one of in the rash guard. It was a, a clothing malfunction, but that cost him the match. It was considered a, a submission. A technical submission, yeah. It, it was considered a submission which put Nurmagomedov MMA School up one. So it was 3-2. One match for Nurmagomedov MMA School would have given them the tie. And you know, the interesting thing is that this would have been avenging the loss from last year's final for the Champions League. So here's so a look at the here's replay. A, a replay, so we're and three and all now. Well, I mean, with the match being 36 seconds, you could show the full match. Uh, you see the very early takedown in just 10 seconds, and then doing a great job of staying in, on the back yeah. until he gets the arm around the neck, and Quite just the final in. adjustments enabled him to get the submission. And this is, the, again, the same sequence, just from a slightly different angle, but this was the whole match here. So, Badia, like you said, now this Leaves it. Three, and all. three matches for Team Mur Nurmagomedov and three for Universal Fighters, which means everything, everything comes down to this, to this last match. And I'm sure every uh, uh, each team is gunning for that first sweet victory on the scoreboard to get that first team win. Well, it's going to be so important, right? They're yeah. going to need it for you know when the when the match uh, when the team wins are accumulated, uh, it's all going to count. Specifically, this submission win uh, is going to count. Uh, he held on as long as he could, but had to submit to the rear naked choke. There we go. And the final match of this face-off, this series. Team score tied three to three. This final match will determine the winner. Up first at 70 kilograms from Team Nurmaga Medov, Ali Bekov, Gaji Murad.
fighters, Guy Irbeck, Ibrahimov. <laughs> So we're into the last fight of the first tie of the night. Nurmagomedov MMA School and Universal Fighters. It's a dead heat tie, three and all for both teams. And we've got a submission attempt here too. Quick leg entanglement there. Oh, but this is a nice wrestle up here. And we are seeing this is the match, the 70 kilogram division with Gaibek Ibragimov, and he is a very technical submission grappler. He actually won the ADCC trials in 2019, but was unable to compete at the World Championships due to visa issues. But that should give you an idea of how good his submission grappling really is. So some of these MMA fighters uh, that are uh, from the Nurmagomedov MMA school, they actually have a very good jiu-jitsu pedigree and jiu-jitsu background. They do. And we saw some of the fighters from uh, the uh, uh, from Khabib's team basically starting by pulling guard, which was flipping the script because we all thought that they were going to be wrestling and uh, they were going to have more of that power style jiu-jitsu. But I, I remember the first two matches, both of them just pulled guard. Yeah, very curious that we have seen so much guard work here. I think actually um, it has maybe surprised both us and the audience watching. They expected to see more wrestling from the the, the grapplers, the, com the competitors coming out of Dagestan, which of course is well known as having some of the very best wrestlers in the world. But it goes, it, it goes to show that the level of submission grappling, the level of no-gi jiu-jitsu in that area is, is also amazing. very, very sophisticated. And it's just getting better with, you know, uh, all these different rule sets that are attracting these fighters to come and compete, it's just going to make it, you know, they're going to try to implement some of the more modern style game into their into their arsenal, and it's exactly what we're seeing. And we may see Gaibek come out the back door here, but he has to be careful of that far arm. Ibrahimov is doing a good job of controlling the tricep behind the elbow. That really makes it difficult for, for Gaibek to come out the back door. He needs to get his elbow on the ground if he wants to come up to his knees which is exactly So now you see that in now. black, the representative, representative from the you know, Magomedov MMA school, back on top, and dropping now, drops back for a straight Achilles lock. That's a good hips in, a good thrust into the leg. Could be tight here. Gaiabek looks relatively unfazed. And this is something that we know from the, the athletes from Dagestan is that they will resist a submission for as long as, as they long possibly as they can. can. They yeah. don't like to tap. Exactly. And that leg does seem to have come out of the position and now almost securing top position. Gaibek is doing his best to control the hips, but Alibekov is trying to fight onto his side. This is, this is not a control position. There are no points there. And now he goes to his knees. So with a control of the waist, the right hand is fishing for an opening. Gaibek, Bragimov on top of Universal Fighters. So what happens here is, we were talking earlier about the turtle position, which does count for points, but what happened here was uh, the fighter from Nurmagomedov MMA school, he initiated the sequence where he went for the straight Achilles footlock. Mean, that means that when the Universal Fighter came on top, no points were allocated at all. That's why in this sequence, no points were given to either fighter. That's, that's a very good description. I think very important to, to clarify that because maybe some people were wondering why there were no points for that. But here, we see Gaibek is, is switching position here. Looked like he was trying to get his hooks in. But now he's actually coming over the top in into like a smash pass position with a guillotine grip. And if he can keep if he can keep Gatsurimad on his back, he may be able to score points, but, but you oh, know, that was a good half guard recovery. Perfect. Uh, with the, with the, the guillotine grip, uh, if you do make that pass, almost 99% of the time the fighter is going to go to his knees. So he, 
before you get your legs out, you're going to have to get the cross face if you want to keep both shoulders on the mat. And we know how difficult it is in this rule set to get that three points for the pass because they definitely expect you to keep 50% of the opponent's body on his back. So laying on your side will not give you the three points for the pass. And I do, I do have to clarify, I'm very sorry, I misspoke that Guybeck was not an ADCC Trials winner, he was actually an ADCC uh, silver, med trial, silver medalist in 2022, okay. uh, very closely, very narrowly missing narrowly out missing on the, the, uh, the World Championships, but... Okay, there's the end of the round, 0-0, zero, zero, but even though it was 0-0, zero, zero, there was plenty of action in that encounter. I would give this a dead draw because both of the guys, they had their, uh, both fighters, they had their chances. They had their, um, you know, a, a leg entanglement for the normal Gamadog fighter. And then there was the switch where uh, the Universal fighter came on top. So I'm going to have to disagree with you on, on who I think took it. I, I definitely agree that uh, the Nurmagomedov representative definitely uh, had some had. good moments. Ali Bekov was attacking. However, I feel that Gaibek's uh, intention and the fact that he initiated the majority of, of the, those technical sequences, sure, sure. I, I feel like the judges will remember that. But it's important because how close did he come to securing the back? How close did he come to getting the guard pass? And against a a decent submission attack. I feel like you the think, time that, that spent in those positions is going to leave an impression more. on the judges. Okay. So you know that... But uh, hey, that's just my opinion. <laughs> uh, I, okay, uh, you have it sold. I agree with you. I stand corrected here. Um, what happens here is we're 0-0 zero, zero for one round, maybe leaning towards, uh, with, the, with the description that you gave us, uh, maybe leaning towards Ibrahimov, but round if two. one of the rounds does go even even the slightest of margin two and oh then it's all of done. this it di disappears it's done. yeah yeah so the it, final round could be a formality all, it all it all happens if it's all even steven up until the third round so uh basically it's still up for grabs that's what i what i'm getting to is it's up for grabs no you're you're absolutely right that if Ali Bekov can win this round then the team nurmagomedov are still in with a chance if Gaiabek can stamp his authority on this match, on this particular round in this match. The third round, all he has to do is not get submitted because even if he loses on points in the final round, of course, the matches here are won by who wins the most rounds. Yes. So you can lose the first, you can lose the, sorry, you can win the first round 2-0. Yeah. You can win the second round 2-0. Yeah. And if the in the final round, if you your opponent beats you 20 points to zero, you, you still, still win. win the match exactly. because you have two That's rounds to one. exactly the description we were giving about the rounds of a little earlier. Regardless of the point different, uh, difference between the fighters, whoever wins more rounds gets the, gets the fight. It's a very interesting concept that I feel adds so much more to this event. This event already showing a very high level of international grappling this and a very close. high level of production. And one thing I think is important to note is the team element brings so much more drama to proceedings, and especially as we enter the seventh and final match of this series. Wow, this is where it all comes it, down it all to this comes moment. It all comes down to this one, yeah. And I, uh, you can imagine what's going on in the in the back with the teams biting their nails waiting to see who's going to get that first uh, first win on the scoreboard in terms uh, of the team competition so you're absolutely right if you look over into the corner yeah. of the universal fighters team that they are all stood up they're all cheering they're all they're all trying to coach their guy to victory the the Nurmagomedov school very different very quiet very intense watching the match I think that they, they understand how serious this moment is. Another Achilles lock here. Straight foot lock with the Ashi. And he's trying to get the crippler. We, he does have there. a really, he, we had, it's, it yeah. seems to have gone a little bit now. He's lost the angle, but he had a decent leg entanglement there and it looked like he possibly might even try and go for a Z lock, but mm. Gaibek does not seem, he doesn't seem worried at all by the threat. And as you can see, pushes back into the Ashi Grami, the single leg the ankle lock position and gets his ankle out and neutral position. Oh, so we may see a triangle here. There it is. Wow. With his one arm in. He's got to keep his posture down. 
Oh, he manages to get his head out. Diabek, though, I think with the closest submission attack uh, that he's had in this match so far. And that's interesting to note, right? That we should, we should make a point of that. That the Gaibek has only had one submission attack in, in this match so far, but he's spent more time in control. Whereas Ali Bekov has, has maybe been looking for the submission more, and maybe he would be better control, if, he looked, yeah, if, he, if he focused more on the control positions, maybe he would have more success. But so does, which counts more, submission attempts or control? It depends on the submission attempts. Because you know, a, a submission attack like this may look decent for the uninitiated but, but if you look at the pressure on the ankle and the position of the limb you know the guy, the guy is not in not any danger in here any danger yet, exactly. with the back flat on the mat like that and the, the hips flat on the mat it's very difficult to, pre to apply yeah, exactly. breaking pressure through the ankle but if he can control guy on the mat that would be a that looked like two points for me that looked like two points i saw there that's a two-point sweep, in I, my opinion. I saw the, ref the referees his shook head. their head. No, yeah, but that was two points. Nobody initiated a sequence there. It was two points. I felt like uh, I felt like Alibekov actually kicked him back and kind of scooped the ankle and picked it up. But still, still it's again, two points. <laughs> it's just my opinion. <laughs> Everybody sees the match differently. Yeah, yeah, but. But again, look at this. This is a very deep. He has the. They're immediately watching the replay over there. They've got the replay over there. I see. I love the ref. Uh, the Igo judges here. They're so precise. Yeah, they want to make sure that it was uh, it was correct. And they're checking out. They're checking out right now the the replay. Let's see, now we, we see here the last twenty, 20 seconds, seconds of this match. Two. Now this is interesting because if it goes zero zero, yeah, then I would argue that Gaibek has not had as much authority in this round as he did in the previous round and I would say that these submission attacks from Gazzaruma they count I think that he's won this round mm -hmm. even though it ends 0-0 on the, the judges will think that he won this, this round this is the second round or this is, round this is round? the second, second round. round okay we're on to the last round third and final round coming up that's it <laughs> What do you think about the setup here? Amazing. It's amazing. It looks incredible. That looks like a Titan Tron over there <laughs> from our young WWF days. <laughs> so I think that Ali Bekov dropped back for a number of leg attacks, and I think the accumulated submission attacks, the submission attempts that he had on the, the same ankle in okay. almost every attack, I think was definitely the defining factor in that round. Sure. So, as we enter this third and final round, let's see. I wanted to get a replay of that part where it was a, a little confusing with the sweep. And there is, every single member of the team is in the corner yeah. on both sides. Yep. Both of Universal Fighters and Team Nurmagomedov. And they are imploring <laughs> their athletes here in the Team Nurmagomedov corner. As you can see here on the screen, look at that. There are, there is some intense coaching going on right there. Very different attitude in the Universal Fighters. I mean, Jiu-Jitsu is a team sport. Always, the, you know, the teams are a crowd. Round three. You know, they're rooting for their fighters, but this time it's, you know, it's a little different because the win of the team counts on that fighter who's going to take this one right now. Absolutely. As you mentioned, that that's what makes it more fun. So no early guard pull as yet. We're actually seeing a little bit of stand-up wrestling, but no, Gaiabek decides to sit. Playing a half guard here. Looking for that underhook. Will we see him wrestle up? Oh, that's nice work there. From Ali Bekov kind of coming over the top. He has the... Uh, a solid underhook, and he used this position earlier to put Gaibek under pressure. Warning about hands in the face. Restart in the center. Oh. Gaibek tried to pull him into guard, but he almost, he kind of missed him for a second. He had to square back up to try and get him back into a position. 
and we're actually we're seeing a stalling warning. The stalling clock is running against Godzilla in black. Yep. Yeah. But they. Alibekov was, was being told to work, and he already has uh, has managed to clear that stalling clock. This is an interesting thing we should explain as well in the rules that that if the referee feels that the fighter is inactive, he allows him. He gives him a warning, and he has a 20-second stalling clock. If he gets busy in that period, the clock is. Uh, is, is wiped off, no penalty is given, but if he stays inactive, then he could could receive a penalty. Get a penalty, and what's expected from the fighter on top is not just being active, they also want the fighter on top to actively progress the match, yes. exactly, so yeah, you, you need to improve you, you your position. See them, you will see them hand fighting on the top, maybe trying to uh, deceive the judge in a way to say I'm working, but uh, well, the judges, act, act. they actually want you to initiate a guard passing position if you were on top or exactly to progress the match. And all of the judges here know what they are looking for. That is a decent looking, uh, there it's, was a moment of pressure it, on the knee for straight knee bar, but Guybeck is out. But every single referee and judge here at Aiga is, they know it. Well, well, they're all yeah. black belts and they're all very proficient in jiu-jitsu. They know what they're looking at. So. Actually, Damir is a brown belt. Oh, there yeah. you go. Thank you very much. Damir Sadio. But he rolls like a black belt. Oh, he definitely, he, he's a killer. <laughs> I've known down here for a while. I've trained with him too. He's a killer. He is another drop back and uh, dropping back for the uh, for the straight ankle lock. And if this match remains zero zero, this does, as it, yeah, as it as you stuck, mentioned, yeah, you 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 put it could a, be a perfect victory. Gonzalo Morales is insistent on these leg attacks, and even though they have not really come close to securing the submission. And this is the first time okay, we one. saw Gaia go for a leg lock of his own. Just a brief look at that toe hold position. You have to imagine how slippery they are after 15 minutes. <laughs> it's three five minute rounds. Oh, and he's exposed his back. The leg attacks, the leg entanglement opened. And now Gaia Beck is close to securing the back control. Gatsani no needs to yet. fight his way out. No and he does. Yet, and he's out. He clears it. Nothing yet. <laughs> And I would say that he was never really in danger there. Yeah, Guybeck didn't, didn't have a hand around the neck, he didn't have the hooks in. And while he's driving forward, Alibekov hit with a stalling warning. With just over one minute remaining in this match, and you can hear the, the voices are so loud too from both corners. They're so invested in this right now. It sounds like a soccer stadium here. <laughs> Gatsarumat needs to keep going forward. He can't afford to get hit by a penalty at this late stage in the match. Being 0-0, he needs to keep, keep attacking. Tries to go around the back. There, almost there. Gaiabek recovery, but now... Alibekov almost chest back for a moment. Nice guard recovery there from Gaiabek. Elects to go back to Turtle. Less than 30 seconds remaining. How these guys are giving it their all, they don't wanna they don't wanna lose this one for their team. This is going to a referee decision. And I would say, I would say my opinion here is that I feel that Team Nurmagomedov, right. Ali Bekov Gadzaramad may have won this match mm -hmm. with his performance in the, the final two rounds of this particular match. End of the match. And the Team Naga Nurmagomedov are celebrating. They think that they've got this. We need to wait for the official decision. But they are celebrating as if they have won this encounter. And there's a, there's a so how, very, yeah, very look intense at the conversation look between at the, the judges to see what they think. Here, yeah. All the judges are here. So uh, what, what makes this interesting how is that if, um, how, if Nurmagomedov MMA school wins this fight, they have avenged their loss from the previous uh, Champions League final. Yeah, we see the corner here from the team Nurmagomedov. I feel like they think that this is, they, they're confident that they've taken this. They're confident that they've won, but there is no guarantee. We still need to wait for the judge's decision to make this official.
We are seconds away from finding out who takes the, winning the first team. win of the night. Will it be the returning champions from 2022 Universal Fighters, or will it be their rivals from Dagestan, Team Nurmagomedov? A repeat of the final from last season. This is a rematch. Yeah, the opening match of this event was a rematch between last the, year's final. the champion and the runners up. A lot on the line here. There's Gaia Beck. And I, 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 I'm looking, I'm seeing, I'm sensing a look of defeat on his face. I don't Maybe think he's, he's confident that he won this. Huh? And the psychology here is also a factor. The referees and the judges will always look to see the demeanor of the athletes at the end of the match. Do they think that always. he's confident that he won this? So how? Why look at they... the difference, sorry. Look at the difference yeah, in posture in the two. They're asking We see Ali Bekov yeah. is walking around Whereas Guy Beck has only now just got to his feet, and but they he gave it their concerned. all. These guys gave it their all. They went, they went for it definitely. A nice show of sportsmanship yeah. here from the rivals <laughs> from Dagestan, and they I think that's a special moment. It goes to show that as as intense as this competition is, the respect between the two is so important. Good, great sportsmanship, Absolutely. and the crowd's loving it too. Yeah, we have a very educated audience here in uh, in Kazakhstan. This, in uh, this city, Almaty, has a thriving jiu-jitsu jiu scene. Like, they, they love combat sports. They love they love all forms of combat sports. They love judo. They love wrestling. And now they've really fallen in love in these last few years with jiu-jitsu and submission grappling. And they really appreciate the action we've seen here. And not only that, but they appreciate the respect and the sportsmanship as displayed by the, the two competitors here. Okay, we're gonna find out. Drum roll, and there oh, we have it. Oh, Nurmagomedov takes the win. win. First win of the night. Well, that is a uh, very uh, significant. That is a very significant result here. So how the rematch was not a repeat. The, the result was different from last year's final. We're seeing an overall replay here of the uh, the best match, the best moments from this very intense 15-minute match, the three rounds, and Gaibek sealed it. The first round, put points on the scoreboard, really did what was necessary to dispel any doubt. But the second two rounds were open enough, and. Got I, there's some protest here yeah, from the Magomed, coach of uh, Magomed, Universal uh, Fighters. Uh, Magomed is here. Um, he's complaining with the decision. I'm sure he still has that match where the uh, clothing malfunction cost his fighter the, the match. I still think he has that on his mind because... Uh, oh, these leg attacks, they just they added up. You know, Even though the leg attacks weren't necessarily uh, enough to, to really finish the match, but the they fact weren't that up he the was eyes of the constantly judges. hunting for the finish, sure. constantly looking for that submission, that really matters here. And there is that uh, moment, the hand raise. I think Ali that Bekov, was... Gatsal Mad, got his hand raised. That that was the moment of celebration for Team that was a fair. That was a fair decision, I think. It was. It I, was. I think it was a fair decision. So we see Magomed Abdul Kadir still not happy with the with the decision hall over there. Um, the manager of Universal Fighters uh, still standing in protest. He's not happy. And now, as they say, by a score of four to three, your winners, Team Nurmagomedov. Both teams can now shake hands. Wow! So the Universal Fighters. They're, they're not they're showing up on the mat right now. <laughs> that shows that they're just not happy with maybe not happy with the decision. All right, that's it from the the first series. Team Nurmagomedov versus Universal Fighters. Nurmagomedov take the win in this first series. And coming up next. 
we have Team Adolfo versus Team Al Leone. We'll be right back. The second pair of teams. Up first, from the red corner, Team Al Leone. So I'm gonna say and goodbye for now. Grams. How it was a Gary, pleasure uh, and an honor sharing the mic with you. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to getting some more commentating with you in there. We also need your introduction as well. I'm gonna switch over to my boy, BMAC over here. He's standing behind me like a hawk. He wants to get in on the action. It's goodbye from me, Badia Honadar. Uh, shout out to my boys at Art Suave Academy in Tehran. I'll be back, bye bye. At 65 kilograms, Daiki Yonakora. At 70 kilograms, Shu Huai Ching. At 76 kilograms, Kenta Iwamoto. At 83 kilograms, Joseph Chen. At 91 kilograms, Kamal Akagundus. And at 91 plus kilograms, Kaya Rudolph. Opponents in the blue corner, Team Madolfo. Up first at 60 kilograms, Brino Peterson. Five kilograms, Zach Kaina. At 70 kilograms, Fabricio Andre. At 
at 76 kilograms, Dante Leone. At 83 kilograms, Isaac Michel. At 91 kilograms, Giancarlo Badoni. And at 91 plus kilograms, Luke Griffith. the order of weights. The first weight will be 91 plus kilograms. The second weight will be 70 kilograms. The third weight will be 65 kilograms. The fourth weight will be 60 kilograms. The fifth weight will be under 91 kilograms. The sixth weight will be 83 kilograms. The seventh and final weight is 76 kilograms. Plus 91 kilogram athletes can remain on the mat. We'll get this started. All right, we're about ready to get underway here with the first match in this series, the second series of this event. Aiga is going to be Team Modolfo against Team Alioni. And the first match is in the over 91 kilogram division. That is Luke Griffith versus Kaya Rudolph. And I am joined by my buddy, Brandon. Great to have you on the call with me, BMAC. Man, this is a an incredible event, our first time here in Kazakhstan, our first time calling the Aiga Champions League and starting here with this match. You must be pretty excited. I'm fired up. I'm excited to be here, man. This production level is incredible. And we're gonna start off this Madolfo versus Aleone match with one of the baddest rising stars in the entire sport, Luke Griffith. Yeah, you see him here in the green Team Rash Guard, of course, all the teams wearing the same colors. And that, uh, that kind of forest green there, Luke Griffith from South Africa, training in Austin, Texas with John Danaher and the New Wave squad. 
Luke Griffith, a, an ADCC European Trials winner, veteran of the 2022 ADCC World Championships. But I don't think that, I don't think those credentials really do enough to kind of say what this guy's about, right? Round yeah, one. he's he's already a trials champion, but he's grown so much since that time. He comes out, makes contact, pulls guard right away. Now you'd be, yeah, you wouldn't be amiss for thinking that there's a big size disparity in this match here. On top, in black, is Kaya Rudolph, hailing from oh, New Zealand. look at that. And he definitely is undersized compared to the very tall figure of Luke Griffith, who hits this early sweep. No points, though, this early right. in the match. So the only way to score points in the first two minutes is through a takedown. But Luke's looking for the kill right away. Yeah, he, he knows now that that submission, if he can get this match done early, and these guys can get out of here and move on to the next. Rudolph. But look at the hip flexibility there from Rudolph. He, sa he saved the pass for a bit, but... Luke Griffith. looking to step across to the mount. Yeah, when you break it down for us, this interesting grip that Griffith has over the back here. Yeah, he's he's in a north-south basically, but that underhook and then that pin, he's basically got him in a pin there. But he wants to step over into this mount. He's using that grip under the body. There he goes to isolate and pin the hip so he can step over into the full mount. Oh, we're going to see a smother. Are we going to see a smother choke? We know these new wave guys have basically oh, put the smother at, choke on the look map. Look at this though. An excellent counter work. Kaya was looking to come out the back door. That hip flexibility is absolutely oh, this insane. Is, this is bad news. He's already got the double underhooks trying to slide up. Maybe thinking about sliding up to an S mount. Anytime those elbows get separ separated away from the torso like that, it is a dangerous position to be in. And especially so when you have the very large figure of Luke Griffith on top of you in control like this. But here's... Hey, he's not just got the smother, right? He's got options. He's got a lot of options, and he's going straight to the gift wrap. He's going to look to slide to the back and try to put this thing down early and maybe switching off now to the arm triangle, back into the double underhook search, and now the points are in. We're seeing a lot happening here. Griffith is uh, he's using the threat of multiple attacks from this position. Even though he is in control, he is by no means just riding out the position. And look how he threatens the Americana on one side to try to open up the back take on the other side. Look Did at that, Kaya gets that foot here. around in front, and he's gonna escape the mount with this, lace up a leg. And Luke has to roll through, and Rudolph, Kaya looking to take the back of Luke Griffith, escapes the mount position. Incredible sequence there, and not over yet. Thought for a moment that Rudolph might hit a, it's kind of a sacrifice style sweep stroke throw on Let's the guard pull, but that was incredible work there from Kaya. And I think that goes to show that, you know what, even though he was in a bad position, man, and, and again, in another bad position now, still kind of just waiting for that moment to go on the attack, and, and that they, was an incredible piece of work they there. Gave they gave Kaya a negative for the guard pull because he pulled guard during that exchange. And now Luke with the guard pass. Interesting though. Oh yeah, we've seen now 3-0 for the pass from Griffith. It just took a while for the points to show on the board. And he's going to look to go back to the mound again, setting it up. Here he comes. Interesting that we see him trap the leg before kind of straddling the chest this time. I think he wants to make sure that, I mean, he found out that Kaya is the kind of guy, he's got that squirmy kind of escapes, right? And I think he was like, okay, I'm not letting you out this time. I'm going to lock you down. Luke Griffith just putting on a display. And we, we saw Kaya get a little bit of momentum going. Even looked pretty good on the feet there for just a second. Like he, he threatened, he got the body lock, almost jumped the back of Griffith. And now Luke sliding around, gonna look to expose the back. And now maybe the arm, double threat. And it's gonna be the back take. And Luke just racking up points, locks the yeah. body triangle. So he's gonna go across the face and try to close this thing out right now. That was two points for the mount, three points for this oh! body triangle. And we're gonna make a choke to get it done here in the first match in this series. Luke Griffith takes the win for Team Modolfo. The winner, Luke Griffith.
Well, Brandon, I gotta say that I am, uh, I'm not, I'm not shocked by Luke Griffith taking the win in that match, but I will give credit where it's due. I am impressed by the resilience there midway through that match from Kai Rudolph, but I feel like it was a little bit too tall of a mountain to climb. The South African grappler obviously in control there, and uh, maybe you want to break us down through some of these moments here. Well, this was the big escape. You know, we almost got to look at it there. Check this out. We call that a B Smith in the 10th planet system. You slide those feet, get inverted, and look, almost a big moment. Roll through by Griffith. Ends up on top position out of all of it. But aside from just the brief exchange from Kaya, it was all Luke Griffith. Dominant positionally, dominant with the submission, and no surprise, Team Madolfo with this stacked squad comes out. Look, no need to even go under the chin, just straight across, across the face. Straight across yeah. the face. Everything under the nose yeah. is the neck, they say. Up first for Team Al Leone. Shoot, Yeah, yeah. Xu Huaqing out of Shanghai, China, representing Al Leone. And his opponent from Team Adolfo, Fabricio Andre. And I think that this right here is one of the athletes that the audience and spectators should be most uh, excited to watch. Fabricio Andre, an absolute firecracker of a grappler, hailing from the Manaus, uh, Manaus in the Amazon, commonly referred to as uh, the Dagestan of Brazil, oh, where all the best champions come from. Round the Hokage four. has taken the mat. Here we go. We're underway. There is a quick look at the tail of the tape, but the action is underway already. There is no wasting time here at Aiga Champions League. Fabricio Andre, one of the most exciting athletes in the sport. Incredible athlete. Brilliant movements. He's already sliding around the guard. And a nice recovery. But here he goes. Past the guard already. The oh, Funky Kill is him. Oh, he saw it coming. But the speed of that leg drag and the footwork in getting around the guard so quick. This is why you can't blink when Fabricio Andre is on the mat. And he's looking to jack that arm up. Got the underhook deep over here on his left side. Heavy hips with that mount. And you know what? If there was any question about whether the guys would take it easy in the first two minutes because there are no points and they would step on the gas in the latter half of the round, well, it just goes to show that Fabrizio Andre is out to get it done. Yeah, they put all, all of that idea to rest. He's worked. Check that out, how he brings that right arm across and uses the lever of the elbow to try to pry the grip apart. Yeah, you see Ching has got a, he's got a sailor grip style, S-grip, uh, his hands, he's doing his best to try and keep his elbow, well, stop it from getting flared out by linking his hands together, but I don't know if that defense is gonna cut it. And it's only gonna last so long. If Andre can keep this dominant position, He'll be able to walk. He thought about switching off to the double underhooks there. You saw it for just a moment. Sliding the elbow all the way across now. Yeah, he's insistent on attacking that side. He wants that arm. Trying the skipping escape is Ching. But the hips of Fabricio Andre, super low, super heavy. Ooh, he may be stepping across looking for the triangle. See him threatening it now. Coming high. He's kind of covering the top of the arm with his right leg now. He's kind of coming up closer to the shoulder. He's got to be careful, though. He's got to be careful as he starts to get his hips light to get in position so he can move. It opens up that kipping escape opportunity. And you can see that he felt that knee starting to slide in, decided to bail, take the safer route, just stay heavy. Oh, and here comes... Recovery back into the butterfly guard and gonna try to kick into a leg lock. Points Got are now active. We're uh, over halfway through this first five minute round, first round of three. But of course, a submission can end this match entirely at any moment. 
And look at the way Fabricio Andre deals with the leg attack. Oh, the, the dynamicism and the footwork is really, he, he moves so quickly. Yeah, I, I think he's got the best movement of any athlete that we're gonna see this weekend. And I, I gotta say, I just wanna point this out, Brian, that I, I really like his passing posture. You know, the way that he's, uh, he's kind of, he switches from being flat footed oh. to on his toes. He's got it hips low, but then he can explode in a moment. It's, uh, it's artistry. Reverse De La Hiva off the bottom position. Gives a kick away, not gonna try to invert. Kiss of the Dragon style, almost. Or he gives up the guard pass during his movement. Yikes, that was a, a big technical error on Ching's part there. I think Fabricio Andre was almost uh, happy to allow him to try that move. And you see Andre just switching sides back and forth. Gets the knee in position. Clears the guard, he'll score off of this. Nice work of that inside elbow control, keeping the tricep off the ground, the elbow off the ground, denying Ching the ability to shrimp away, recover guard. And not only does he pass, he goes from knee right into the mount. Now he's got a nice 5-0 lead. And that, of course, we should point this out here, that the points may be confusing people. It was three for the pass, two for the mount. That's right. It's so a hybrid rule set here, right? It is. It's a hybrid rule set. They use the scoring convention of ADCC for the most part. So, so that'd be two for the man, three for the back, three for the body triangle. Yes, yeah, it's, it's either two or three. Two, three, two, three. 30 seconds to go here in this opening round of our second match. Team Madolfo fully in control. Nice head positioning. You see how Fabricio uses his head against the face. Oh, he's gonna to try to step off with the Kimura. Didn't quite have the grips that he wanted. And we'll be back to an open guard situation with less than 10 seconds to go here in the opening round. That's time. That's the end of the first five minute period. The athletes will go back to their corners for a, uh, a brief moment. That's one, one round down, one in the bag for Team Rodolfo. And you can see in the corner actually is Mo Jassen, the head ADCC organizer, the organizer for 2020, well, 2019 and 2022 and the upcoming 2024 ADCC World Championships. But here's the best moment. You want to talk us through some of these here, Brandon? Yeah, you know, we can see Fabricio, he, he changes sides so well. His movement is so clean with his guard passing. He'll go side A, side B, back and forth. And once he gets, once he gets you behind just a little bit, Able to slide that knee into position, uses the knee on belly to solidify the guard pass and then steps right into the mount position. Some strong positional attacking, strong guard passing from, from Fabricio, but not able to secure the submission. I don't feel like he's been too insistent on the submission yet in this match. I mean, he's definitely, he's definitely uh, you know, sought out some openings, but I wouldn't say that he's really gone for the kill yet. Maybe we'll see that change now. He's five minutes down and the blood is flowing and warm and ready to go. Little, little adjustment to the clock there. They started it just a little bit early. There we go. And so Ching pulls guard again. Remember, the only way to score a point, leg drag, only way to score a point in the first two minutes of the match of each round is via takedown. So look at this. No, Just that beautiful is exactly movement. the same guard pass we've seen now three times in a row. Wow. It's one of the most effortless looking leg drags I think I've ever seen, Brandon. Yeah, just dominant Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from Fabricio Andre. Using that knee on belly to push those hips. But Ching staying up on his side, keeping himself from getting mounted right now. And Fabricio not really pushing the pace too much because there's no, there's no points to be had right now. So one minute until the points hit. Curious to see the way that Fabrizio Andre was hanging out in that position there. It's, uh, his knee was almost or entirely across the torso and touching the mat, but he didn't pass his leg all the way across. His, his 
foot was hooking the hip. So it's kind of a hybrid knee ride mount. But yeah, similar to the way you know, if you're a, a fan of ADCC over the years historically, think about the way that Hoyler Gracie used to look when he passed the guard. It was all about sliding into that knee on Ben. Check this out. Arm triangle attempt. And I think that was why. That's that's why it, it, when you're in the mount, it's maybe sometimes a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit easier for the guy to kind of shell up. But when you hang out in that kind of halfway position, then uh, it, it, it can give you a, a little more in the way of openings, right? Yeah, and I was thinking maybe Andre was going to hang out in that knee ride until the points period hit so he could just make an easy score right there. Just put himself in position so that when the points started, which is right now, that he could be ready to get a quick two. Oh, my God. Stop pass. Love it. Love that attack right there. He nearly cleared the the inside knee. And I think he's going to get it there. He manages to deal with that inside leg. Back exposure. Oh, look at this. Maybe a reversal coming up. Oh, yeah. That's good work there from Ching. Yeah, and he's going to have to wrestle with Fabricio now. Two and a half to go in the second round of our second matchup here. Team Madolfo. Oh, wrist Ali snap. Only. There was a wrist snap attempt there we from were, Fabricio We Andre. were just talking about that right before we went on the air. We were geeking out over wrestling techniques with Brad that you mentioned is one of your oh. favorite. Look at that. Slide by to the foot sweep from the back. Fabricio Andre one hook in. We're seeing some really slick grappling here at Iger. Ching denying that second hook. But he's got to be careful keeping his hand down there. I mean, Fabricio could move right into a choke. There's the second hook now coming in. It's going to make it 3-0. And you could score from this back control position with either two hooks in or a body triangle. And just like with ADCC, you can score multiple times in a row from the back position. So Fabricio, and, and you'll see that here, he just did that 6-0 now. Seems Ooh. to be going high though, could yeah. see maybe like reverse triangle from yeah, this position. Yeah, about the rear triangle, switching off this Kimura grip to control it. Oh, Ching is in deep water here. Deep, deep waters. Oh man. Brief separation of that grip, and there it is. Oh, we're looking at the shoulder lock attack. And I think actually that shoulder lock has enabled Ching to kind of just about get a little angle. He's going to go for the Americano on the inside, the Udi Garami. Thought he might slip his head out, but the triangle only got tied to... Oh. Got it. Tangled arm lock. Beautiful wow. man. Clinical. Two matches, two submissions. Team Madolfo. How would you call that submission, Brandon? Um, it's got a couple of different names. Tangled arm lock, Udi Garami. It's an Americana from inside the rear triangle. Depends on how many words you want to put on it. The I'd call it gangster is what I would call it. Yeah. Dominance. From, uh, from start to finish, a uh, clear advantage for Team Adolfo in that match. And Jing, I think, showed that actually, you know what, Chinese Jiu Jitsu is maybe better than some people expected because, hey, he hung in nearly 10 minutes with a, a world caliber Brazilian athlete right there. Yeah, I mean, he stayed in the match, but we also got to be honest. It was one sided. It was totally one sided. Oh, look at this, the foot sweep from the back. That was and such a And just immediately nice to the hook, too. Look at that. Uh, Fabricio Andre, probably the best athlete that we're going to see on the stage all weekend. It's quite the statement. I, I really think he is. And, oh, my goodness. Nasty Americana-style pressure. Look at this. Just goes hands on hands, separates, breaks the grip, oh, the drives hips, the driving hips. Driving through. Oh, man. It makes me wince. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting and yet also a thing of beauty. There it is again. Perfect angle. You can see the torque going through the shoulder. The hips locked uh, into the shoulder and the, the, the legs completely closed tight. Gave Cheng absolutely no room to escape and Fabrice Andre was able to get that win now. That makes it two in a row for Adolfo. From Team Al Leone. Daiki Yonakora.
representing Team Adolfo, Zach Kaina. So this should be an interesting matchup. Zach, one of those newer, lesser known guys on the Modolfo team, but I've been here with him for a couple of days this week and I've been watching this kid practice. He's an Atos uh, black belt, train partner. AOJ black belt. I'm sorry, me, AOJ yeah. black belt, uh, train partner out there with Cola Bate. And I was watching this kid wow. move around on the mat this week. He's sharp, sharp. Well, guard player, great movement. When you come out of the Mendez Brothers Academy, uh, art of jujitsu, there is uh, there's basically no way that you don't develop some seriously precise technique. Those guys are well known. And Zach Kainer has basically been there since he was a little kid. You know, he's one of those guys who went through it from the juvenile ranks all the way through up to the uh, to the black belt level, just like Kolobate, who is in his corner for this match. Look at but that. Daiki of Japan representing Team Alioni on bottom here. And he's looking for a false reap. You know, I've always said this, Brandon, and I, I feel like you probably agree. Being oh, a student, he's in a nice leg attack here. Kind of addresses it well. But I always feel like the Japanese grapplers are overlooked, and yet you, as a student of you know all combat sports and as a, a lover of uh, the old school Japanese MMA, you well know that Japanese grapplers are not always to be underestimated. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. Look at the flexibility that. Because the Japanese grapplers, Dyson hey, Shaw. they were the ones, they pioneered leg locks in nogi grappling and Absolutely. MMA way before the Americans caught on. Yeah, they were doing it way before it was cool. You know, of course, Imanari, Rumina Sato, just a long list of great leg lockers. And this style is, it's a, it's a little funky as well, you know, Japanese, Jap Japanese grapplers, it's, they're quite far removed oh. from the international scene. They don't compete on the international scene maybe quite as much as some other nationalities. So semi-isolated, they've developed their very own interesting take on jiu-jitsu, and it's very good, but sometimes it can pose a little, you know, a little funkiness comes through. Look at these catch guys out. to the back. Attempt by Kaina. He's got great movement, but listen, this one's tight. Kaina, uh, Kaina and Daiki. Man, Daiki hit that reversal just 15 seconds before the points came into play. So even now he's on top, dropping back for another leg lock. He could have scored two for that. Points. And now the points period comes in. And now we'll see if they stop with the back and forth leg exchange and start prioritizing the points. They tested each other out just a little bit. Kind of working towards this leg drag. A very competent and uh, very studious black belt once told me that for every leg lock, there's a Baron Bolo counter, and for every Baron Bolo, there's a leg lock counter. And I feel that Daiki insisting on the leg game here, the kind of, he's gonna have those answers, but, oh, he's got the answer for the wrestle up as well. Oh man, I thought he might get that back take there, but he's gonna slide off the top. He's attacking the Kimura. He's got a figure four grip with both the legs and the arms there for a second, but that's two for, for Daiki. He's on top now. Yeah, he finishes in top position. So, first points on the board for Aleone as Daiki takes the lead on Kaina. Yeah, Kaina, no question, has all the technical answers for these leg lock, leg lock attacks. I, I almost felt like uh, Yonakura was... Um, was almost entering into the legs like a lot of people do with the intention, the Just intention of going for something else. Yeah. Oh, it's a great strategy. I think we'll see it a lot this weekend. Yeah, I, th I think it's a situation where like two plus two equals five. Like you got the guard passing, you got the leg locks, but when you have both at your disposal, it gives both an extra power up. And we just saw that. And look how Yonakura. he slowed it down. The, the change in pace now. Yonakura is on top and he's like, hey, I'm 2-0 up. I'm going to chill here for a bit. He's not stalling. He's, he's putting Kainer under pressure, but he's not as... Uh, he's, he shifted down the gear now. You can definitely feel it. Well, yeah, he definitely shifted his strategy. Nice look at the leg lock there. Actually forced Kainer to bail away, which is unusual. Kainer lassoing the leg around on his left side. Yonakura looks good. Trying to slide into a leg drag of his own. Has the staple on the right side. Wants to punch that leg the rest of the way across and now another good weave of that leg.